so stupid it's positively brilliant. Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Quarantined edition, baby. Yeah. I'm not taking the risk Schultz he's taking. <laughs> I'm in the studio. Heather out there in them streets. Are you quarantined uh, in the studio? I'm nah, like I go from my crib to the studio. That's the rule. Everybody gotta go crib to studio. Too much action, baby. You think so? Too much action for New I York City, a, man. I take a motorcycle to work. Like a fucking badass, dude. This quarantine turned me into a badass. Do you wipe the motorcycle down? Say again? Do you wipe the motorcycle down? No, nah, I'm going fast. Huh? I'm going fast, bro. I'm, t- I'm going I'm talking about do you wipe Rona. it down before you get on it? No, nah, because I feel like if you go fast, the Rona isn't going to be able to settle on it. Listen, they said that the Rona can live. Hold on, I just saw this shit. Hold on, yo. This shit is crazy. This shit is scary. It's yo, not scary. It's just like, what the fuck, yo? Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, and this is, maybe you don't recognize this as much because you're out in, um, in Jersey, in luxury, you know, in your beautiful home. Let's talk about it. With your tiles that need to be redone. I don't like these ceiling tiles. Let's you talk about it. That's brand new. Tiles, bro. Oh, it's the basement, new? though. It's the man cave, though. Like this, um, there was there was nothing like even down here, cave, bro. You they, need they some were... real tiles up there. You need Michelangelo to paint some shit. Nah, I think you go ceiling art. Yeah, dude. Nah, I mean, cause there was nothing. There was nothing down here. Plus, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not staying in this house. It's probably like my last year in this house. Oh, where are you going? Yeah, something a little bigger. Really? Yeah, life is Everybody good, man. Going broke, you spending money. You want me to? Life is. Listen, by the way, <laughs> you know, Put down your phone, that's going to distract you the whole time. Put down your phone, bro. Hold on. No, I want to read you. Yeah. I want to read you this Warren Buffett quote. Oh, is Warren talking? Oh, what well, you need blood in the streets by or something like that? Hold on. No, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This, <laughs> this shit is hard, bro. <laughs> The great Warren my, 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 my financial guy sent me this. The great Warren Buffett once said when he was speaking about investing in the stock market, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. <laughs> mm. I'm <laughs> a hungry hippo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Nah, it's man. true though. Everybody got a little, that has a little money right now is just waiting for that stock market to dip. Wait it already it. has historic lows, baby. Yeah, but it came back up. I think it came back up to like 20,000 yesterday. Yeah, but that shit went right back down like in like hours. Like it, it went up right when they announced the deal. Yep. And then it went, it went right back down. It's going to be like that for a while though. Oh, once what Trump is paranoid about is, uh, is the unemployment numbers to come, come out because right now, this is the week everybody gets fired. Yeah. Right? It's going to be bad because now because companies were like, how long is this shit going to go down? And it looks like it's going to be a couple months from what I say, from what I see. So once companies realize that they go, okay, I got to lay off all the staff. So not everybody non-essential is getting laid off this week. And then more layoffs after and people getting pay cuts. It's going to be real out there, man. Now nah, it's going to be bad. I'm going to be honest with you. Though. We can get into, the, you know, we start this show off by doing, um, you know, things that we think are positively brilliant and things that we think are fucking idiotic. I'm going to be honest with you. This is going to Talk sound to crazy. Talk I, can, to me, I, bro. I can see why Trump has an approval rating of 60 percent. Talk to um, me. For the, for, the, for the coronavirus, the way he's handling the coronavirus. And I'll tell you why. Okay. The past six days or seven days, however long it's been, Donald Trump has been on TV every single fucking day. Mm. Now, there's been no counter programming to that from the Democratic side, from the people that are supposed to be presidential candidates. You just saw, you know, Joe Biden, he did something yesterday. Uh, um, I think Bernie did something over the weekend. But for like five, six days, all you saw was Donald Trump, right? Mm. So whether, yes, he did handle it all fucked up when it first started, but now he looks like he's trying to fix it. And his messaging is so simple because it's like, look, this is not our problem. It started in China. They created it. But I'm going to fix it by throwing a goddamn bag at you. Mm. It's, it's such simple messaging for Americans to motherfucking understand. And I just think it makes him, whether you agree with it or not, it makes him look like he is leading. It makes him look like he is a leader. It, it, he's the person that people see every single day on television controlling the narrative of this motherfucking coronavirus. And yesterday, you know, people got upset with him for being optimistic. Mm. For saying, look, we're going to be back open by Easter. Mm. <laughs> like, it's, it's some stupid shit to say because all the scientists and, you know, the, the, the experts say differently. Mm. But when you're the leader of the free world, when you're the president, aren't you supposed to give the people a little bit of hope? Hey, bro. 
Hey, and you do it on Easter, the economy will be resurrected on Easter, baby. That's kind of brilliant. It's kind of hey, brilliant. You, I agree with you. It's brilliant. I will say this. This might be a historic event that's about to happen right now. I'm going to disagree with you on Trump. Talk to me. I think he's been doing a horrible job. I think that he has not taken this seriously. I think the branding of it as a Chinese virus is good because China tried to flip it and they tried to blame it on like American soldiers that were in China. So I think he was trying to nip that in the bud. But Chris is I, unmuting his Chris is unmuting his mic right now. Chris is coming out, <laughs> <laughs> throwing stars, going through the computer. <laughs> no, it's um. But I I think that he's being foolish, and I think that he's so afraid of fucking up the economy that um, he would rather people go to work, catch it, and a bunch of old people die, and we have a health crisis on our hands, than uh, fuck the economy up and spook the economy. I think. Oh, by the way, I, yeah. I agree with you 100%. I'm just saying the perception. Oh, the perception. It, it, so, like, so, like, put it like what you just said, there yeah. should have been a Democrat every day for the past six days oh, saying the, what you said. There Counter was. programming. There was. He just wasn't a presidential, can presidential candidate yet. But Cuomo. You know was? Cuomo. Cuomo. Cuomo has Positively been brilliant. Deliver. That's what I was going to say for positively brilliant. This guy has been delivering with presidential uh, prowess for the yes. last week or two. And, bro, he did a couple things that were really interesting. First of all, I feel like different times call for different leaders, right? Right now, you need a Democrat because you need someone who's, whose attitude is not, uh, hey, everybody pull themselves up by the bootstraps. When there's a fucking global pandemic, it's like, well, shit, help me with a bootstrap. You need right? coddling. You need coddling. You need, you need somebody rubbing coddling. you on your back, holding yes. your hand, telling you everything's going to be okay. Spoon me. Spoon me, right? Yes. But here's the thing also. You don't need a pussy-ass Democrat that's like pandering to every group and is a total cuck, et cetera. You actually need an Italian Democrat because you know an Italian is going to say shit like, <laughs> you're being disrespectful, <laughs> calm yourself down, right? But here, he's also going to say, I got you. I'm going to send some bread over to your mother's house. Everybody's going to be fine. So you need someone who is sweet and endearing, but also tough and might punch you in your fucking mouth if you speak out. You feel safe with the tough guy, but you also feel taken care of by the Democratic leadership. And it's like, if Cuomo was in the election now, it's his. And I think this, if he rides this wave, gives him a really good look at 2024. Oh, yeah. A, a star is being born with uh, Governor Cuomo. 100%. It's, it's, it's not even close. A star is definitely being born. I, I said that um, I actually thought him and Gavin Newsom of California were doing really great jobs. I think mm -hmm. Cuomo's killing them, though. It's like, it's, like, it's like watching Tim and Swiss do a beat battle. Like, Swiss got slappers. But Tim Gavin, really he got through. slappers. Yeah. But Tim got them classics, bro. Cuomo, <laughs> Cuomo looks, he looks really sturdy. Yeah, 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 dirty man, and he's keeping people nice and calm, but giving them the urgency of the situation, letting them yeah. know, look, if you don't get in the motherfucking house, this shit ain't gonna get no better, bro. Yeah, I like that. I like that because right now, man, that's why I want to give you know, uh, you know, what a fucking idiot to all you motherfuckers who just won't stay the fuck home. <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? It's literally like being Noah, and Noah's telling people to get on the ark and they're not listening. Yeah. So now you got to take, you got to take some delight in watching y'all drown. Yeah. Yeah. It's Seriously. A little, it's crazy because the way that uh, Americans react to the coronavirus is completely weather dependent. Right. Because <laughs> like, when it's, when it's cold outside, everybody's like, yo, we got to quarantine. We got to buckle up. It's, you know, we got to take this shit seriously. As this soon as it's a nice like, day. <laughs> it's 60 and fucking sunny. We're playing tennis, soccer. Motherfuckers are wrestling in the park. Making you know? up shit. Making up shit. Talking about hot. Uh, he kills it. <laughs> he kills it. As long it. as we run fast. Yeah. As, as if it's not in the fucking Caribbean. As if the <laughs> islands don't have a couple of corona cases. Yeah, dude. It's a, it's a crazy situation because... Uh, I think some of the branding that they use to try to keep us uh, quarantined actually hurt them. Like when they said you got to be uh, six feet away from each other, the social distancing mm -hmm. in our normal lives, I'm almost never within six feet of another human being outside of public transportation, which I'm not taking anymore because of coronavirus. If somebody's within six feet of me, I'm looking at them. I'm going, you good? Is that what's, what's good? Yo? I never measured. I get what you're saying. I never measured, though. So, but yeah, so they basically gave us a situation where we can feel comfortable living our fucking lives as we would normally live them. We're never yeah. six feet. 
within six feet of people. You know, you're either in your car, you're walking by yourself down the street. If someone comes next to you, you move a little bit over. But the sixth thing gave us all the confidence we need to go outside and keep doing the regular shit we're doing. If they said it's airborne and then stopped at that, we'd be in the house letting the delivery boys get that shit as they yeah. deliver all of our food, all yeah. of our water, everything we need. That was they should have never gave us. A, they should have never gave us a distance. Never. Yeah, 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 yeah. They should have never said just stay up. away from six feet. Stay away. Stay six feet away from people, and you'll be fine. They should have never done that. Just say it's airborne. Airborne freaks everybody yeah. out. We stay in. Little shit that they're doing, like, like now that now that this this uh this like uh economic package that they passed. I was doing a little research into like really how the economy works and why a, an economic uh, uh stimulus bill like that would be helpful and. Here's the reason why, like, the coronavirus is actually the perfect thing to cripple an economy. The way an economy works is you need to produce things and consume things. That's right. Consumer spending is at a halt. Exactly, right? So, and the reason why they throw money at us is because they're like, in order for the machine to keep running, you need to keep producing and consuming. You can't consume shit from quarantine. So don't throw money at the problem. If there's nothing for us to go out and consume, the only way to beat this is if the virus either runs through us or we stop it by being quarantined and then you stimulate the economy again. But right now, you're either giving people money, which is $1,000 checks, or you're giving businesses money and the businesses will eventually pay their employees and then they'll spend the money. But you need the money to be spent. And this well, quarantine has stopped spending. Yeah, I think they just get. I think they want money that uh, for people to be able just to spend on the basics. You know what I'm saying? America's economy booms because of all the unnecessary shit that we buy, that 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 we don't need. But I think they just giving people money for the basics just to just to make sure shit doesn't fucking flatline. I guess I guess that's important, and uh, well, it's obviously important. But if they're looking at this as like an economic stimulus package, not an economic survival package, that's different because. I think what a lot of people don't realize is, is like when they say like a business is too big to fail, right? Like what they mean by that is if the business fails, there are so many people that are economically reliant on that company that if it fails, it actually has a bigger effect, negative effect on the economy than if you bail it out. And that's why me and you, we might not personally get bailed out, but like Boeing, the airline company will get bailed out because if Boeing goes out of business, the negative effects on not only our economy but the global economy will be bigger. Oh, absolutely! Than if we just bail it out. Oh, absolutely! People, you know, people, you know, get upset when you, when like the Democrats. I think their first package, um, or the Re Republicans' first package, was going to help corporations more than they help people. And people get upset when you hear that on the surface, right? Yes. It's like, yo, if you get rid of a whole corporation, think about how many jobs that are going to be gone. You know what I'm saying? How many motherfuckers going to be unemployed? Yeah. Like that shit. That shit cripples the economy in a whole different way. And globally cripples it. Like someone was explaining to me, because we've been doing this daily Corona pod. So like, I've been trying to like share this, this information, but I was like, so, so if like, give me an example of how this has affected somebody. And like, they were just giving an example of like when Argentina, the whole country was essentially going bankrupt and um, Argentina supplies like 25% of the world's beef, right? If you take 25% of the world's beef away from the world beef economy, that's a stable protein for most people. Now beef goes up in price and people need to spend more of their money that they get from their paycheck on that beef in order to purchase it. That means they have less money to consume other things. That means the global economy gets fucked up by it. So basically the uh, World Monetary Fund basically went in there and was like, or the International Monetary Fund, whatever that is, went in there and like, okay, let's restructure some Argentinian debt here because we can't have this global effect on the economy. Now nah, Peter says, "Fuck that, bro." Peter said, "Fuck that. Keep Argentina in debt, bro." Peter and Russell Simmons like, "Nah, fuck that. We want y'all to go under, man. Fuck you and your twenty five percent beef all over the world." <laughs> Where That's is Russell right about now? What's he doing through this shit? Russell in Bali doing goddamn yoga. Russell be he be, he be on IG live doing yoga. That, oh, that's another. I want to tell. I want to say um, salute to everybody who's 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 really tapping into their creative, yeah. their creative energy. On Instagram Live, that's been very, that's been very. You gotta come on. Corona's got talent, bro. I saw, I saw, I didn't, I didn't watch it. I saw the uh, the trailer you put up yesterday. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. Oh, uh, you gotta come on, dude. We usually do it either five or seven p.m. every day on my Instagram Live, but it's crazy, man. People are in there and jumping in there and doing wild shit. And honestly, the coolest part is like when people sing. 
we play the music as well. We start singing and it kind of gives you that thing that you've been wanting throughout this entire experience, which is like a little connection to other people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the thing about that and that, the reason I think it's so brilliant is everybody that I see doing it, it's like the real talent is, 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 is rising to the surface, right? Because mm. if you look at like you, you're leaning into comedy. Because yeah. you're a comedian, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And if it's a lot of people, if you didn't know Andrew Schultz is a comedian, when you're sitting down and you have a captive audience, now you know, oh, this is what Andrew Schultz does. Right. Somebody like D-Nice. D-Nice is leaning into being a DJ. Yes. He's not doing anything out of the norm. This motherfucker ain't setting himself on fire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's not out in the street talking about, you know, hey, I'm, we, I'm, I'm checking for the corona, I'm, whatever. He's not doing yeah. that. He's not doing any clout chasing. He simply got online and did what he he was good at. He leaned into his talent. I saw um, Swiss Beats and Timberland last night. Yeah. All they're doing is playing their catalog, having a beat battle. Two yeah. of the best producers of all time. Like, nobody's doing anything extra. They're just yeah, leaning dude. into the gifts that God gave, gave them. them. Yeah. And it just looks it just looks really, really dope. It looks really, really dope, man. It's really getting a lot of people through. I've been, I've been watching more Instagram Live than I have actual TV. Yeah, dude. Isn't that wild? Like, and what's cool about leaning into what you do is like you get to play a part in how people cope with this. Yes. 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 You know, yes. Like, yes. like we, we all play a role in the ecosystem. And right now our role actually has value. Like we talk for a living. We make jokes for a living, right? We talk about the world and we express like our feelings and maybe those feelings are relatable to everybody. Like right now they need that. They need that. So we got to step up just like someone else got to step up, you know, like, in this moment, people are home. Most of them are healthy. They just need fun, entertaining distraction. Well, we're the entertainers, yep. so let's fucking go. What yeah, are we waiting for? We're, we're media. Um, we have essential jobs. Yes, you know this what is I mean? essential. You know how the fuck I know? Because I got a certificate from the government that says so, just in case I need to come into that corona-infested city. All I right? get one. How I get one? <laughs> and, I can, and I can flash my goddamn certificate, okay? <laughs> All right? Because I'm an essential part of, of, of the media. Yeah. Right, but it's just like, yeah, man. You you also got to thank God for that too, bro. You yeah. got to thank God the fact that you have a job to where you can actually stay at home. Everybody don't have the luxury of staying home, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody don't have the luxury of staying home right now. Some people got to go to work. They got to yeah. make ends meet. If their job is still fucking making them dollars circulate, they got to go in there and circulate them dollars. Yeah. So it's like I'm I'm thankful that I have a job where I can sit in my motherfucking basement in my recliner chair, do the radio show in the morning, the Breakfast Club, and then come and do the fucking podcast at noon right now. And your job has increased in value very much so exponentially during this time. Like what I've realized is that like entertainment now is shaping people's days because they no longer have like work hours or like dinner parties and stuff to go to. Right. So it's like mm -hmm. all right, D Nice is going live at nine. Bet. Nine o'clock, we're going to go check out D-Nice's live. All right, Breakfast Club is on at 7. I'm going to wake up at 9. I'm going to catch the Breakfast Club. I'm going to listen to the whole thing. All right, Brilliant Idiot is coming out at noon. So all of a sudden, we're like dictating our day based on meals yep. and entertainment. And how yep. cool is that to be like a central part of people's fucking day, man? It's like you got to relish that. As that fucked up as this time is, it's cool to have that effect on people. You said you scheduling meals. I'm scheduling showers. That I'm not gonna lie. That's what makes me feel like a fucking idiot. That's a what a What's fucking that? idiot. What's like, the, what a the fucking hardest idiot? thing to do when you're sitting at home doing nothing is yeah. is, is figuring out when to yourself. take a goddamn shower. <laughs> like what you got a shower for? I've been like I got a shower for. <laughs> Like I woke up, I be waking up at 5, 25, 30 to do breakfast club. I don't brush my fucking teeth. That's how I know I love the listeners. Cause you know, when you got that boo, when you got that boo that you love, you yeah. wake up, your breath stink, you roll over and you get that kiss. Yeah. You know what I'm saying that's how I treat the listeners. I get up in the morning and I fucking get on that microphone, breath stinking all because I love them. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's just like, when do I take a shower? That's, I go when my hair gets greasy, but. You know, you you don't have that same predicament. No. So that's it. That's it. It could get bad though. Does your wife just make you? You know what? I um I go like I went I, I worked out yesterday. Yeah, what is your day? Break down the schedule of your day. Um my what day is your has been day. My day has been waking up, waking up at five twenty instead of four twenty. Okay. Um, going downstairs, making sure everything's, you know, set up with the mixer and all of that. Yeah. Um, we start the show at six o'clock, done by like nine. I get up, I go watch uh ESPN and watch CNN. Hold on. And 
what could you possibly get from ESPN now? Nothing. It's just a habit. <laughs> It is. It's just a literally. habit. It, it literally is just a habit. Like it, now, I'm not going to front. The other day was real good when they had the free agency. When the NFL free agency <laughs> oh, was Oh, yeah, going, when Tom Brady went to That Tampa was some good shit. shit. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, they yeah. were discussing some good shit. Other yeah. than that, there is nothing. Like, they are on there talking about the dumbest shit. I saw Stephen A. and Max Kellerman talking about who was the scariest boxer of all time. <laughs> yeah, Yesterday, they was on there talking five, about bro. who's the top five, top yeah. three greatest quarterbacks. Like, they just have a straight-up barbershop podcast talk. Yeah. Like, they have nothing to discuss. <laughs> Discuss. Bro, it's but it's like, still, I mean, it's still entertaining. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm watching it and looking at how they're doing the show, like how we're doing this right now. Yeah. I'm paying attention to that. Like, oh, how, do they, how are they the doing The production it? value. They're doing this. They're doing like Zoom and shit like that. They got oh, people from calling their friends. They're both going in. Well, no, Stephen A and Max are somewhere and Molly's somewhere else. But the guests that they have are usually from their houses. So they'd be right. on like FaceTime or Skype or Zoom. And so that's just interesting to see because I'm sitting there looking like, Yo, it's going to be a lot of people saving a lot of money on production value when this shit is over, bro. Oh, yeah. I don't got to fly guests in no more. I could just do this shit and get bro, the same motherfucking effect. I was talking about this. We do this night, nightly corona quarantine show. And I was talking about this. I think college is over. Because right now college is saying, hey, everybody go home and take your classes online. And the second we realized that we could take all the classes that we were taking online that it's no different and get the same certificate the jig is up what the fuck am i paying fifty thousand dollars a year to go to school so that my daughter can get fucking wasted and do keg stands and shit that's what you're going for but that's what it's I'm, for i ain't paying no fifty thousand dollars for it but it's for the social experience you gonna let your daughter get socially keg stand she gonna get it anyway no not at my house <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be no keg stands at my house. It's for, it's for the social experience. This is the, that's the one thing that we all have to be very cautious of, bro. Like we can, This can be either positively brilliant or, or, or fucking idiotic, right? But when all of this is said and done, yeah. let's not have developed the habit of not showing love to each other. Meaning like, not shaking hands, not hugging, oh. staying away from each other, getting used to being on the fucking Zooms and all of that shit because you don't want to be around people or you feel like you, you know, cutting corners with money. Because what do they say? They say it takes, what, 18 days to develop, to something, for something to develop as a habit? 21 days to develop as a habit. 21 days. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you're already, we're already in a world where we really don't have the connections that we want because social media to me is not actually a real connection. Uh, but then when you when you put on top of that the fact that we not you know saying what's up to each other and we not saying yeah. hi and we distancing yeah. from each other yeah. that could get really weird bro that could create a really cold society man yeah and we are communal people like we actually need that connection yes man but you, you're yeah, saying you're, that we could get so comfortable and matter of fact it could be like financially more efficient to not be connecting right like well, let's let's say for example the Breakfast Club, iHeart, well, it wouldn't, wouldn't happen like this because your YouTube is so, such a huge uh, part of the platform. But, like, let's say they go, hey, we don't want to pay for this big-ass building. Why don't you guys just record the, po uh, the uh, radio show from your homes every day? That's way cheaper for us. I would love it. You would? Other than the celebrity interviews. But I don't got to be around them motherfuckers. I wouldn't. I, I, but I would love to. Other than the interviews, I would love that. But the interviews are so great. That's the thing. You miss out on that. You got to have the interviews. Nah, you got to have the interviews. I don't think it's the same. That's what I mean. Though. Like, if I was the Skype, we were the Skype in a guest right now, due to the circumstances, people would get it. People would understand. understand. Yeah. But when you get back to normal, nah, they like that intimacy. That's what, that's what we don't want to lose. We don't want to lose the intimacy of being human. How long do you think it takes before we start operating the same way socially that we did prior? to this christmas <laughs> christmas man it's a fucking american we ain't got time for this shit soon as america gets back open and shit is all good christmas we gonna be back at it baby okay all right this is yo, this, this is about to be a crazy year we about to get hit one after the other like is this shit yeah this shit will probably be over by like may yeah then we rolling right into fucking everybody at each other's throats because the election is in november oh yeah like, this shit is about to be crazy. We don't know what the country is going to look like in December. We don't know what the world is going to look like in December. Like, I, God may yeah. have to come down and intervene for real, for real. <laughs> like, it might have to be some do, referee shit, bro. Do you, think that, do you think that this is God or whoever, the, the simulators, the powers that be, intervening a virus like this? And the only reason I ask you that is because 
It's a very weird virus in that it literally only attacks human beings and by attacking human beings, right? The world seems to regenerate. They say the canals in Venice, Italy are clear again for the first time. They say the skies in different cities in China have uh, no smog for the first time. It's like, I, I was literally thinking about this. I was like, wait a minute. Is this, is this the powers that be going, hey, motherfuckers, y'all need to relax. You need to chill. You need to have a Ramadan. You know, Ramadan, one month off. Yeah. Like maybe that's what they're saying. Hey, reconnect with yourselves. Talk to each other. Take a break. Take a pause. Take a deep breath. Let the world reproduce. Do you think that's possible? It proves the theory that I've, I've said for years. Humans are the parasites of the fucking earth. We are the worst thing that ever happened to this goddamn planet. Mm. The worst thing. Everything else on this planet knows how to just recycle itself, to replenish yeah. itself. Like, the yeah. earth is going to be fine. When the earth gets rid of us, the earth going to be out here thriving. Right. You talk, what? Yeah. You're talking about the economy. The grass is going to be so green. The flowers yeah. are going to be blooming. It's going to be fruits and vegetables grow, growing that never grew before. Like, we are the scum of the earth. You know what I was thinking about the other day, which makes us so fucking stupid as humans? This can go into the what a fucking idiot. We, we, we rely on trees, right? Like, we on give trees? off trees. We give off yeah, carbon yeah, dioxide. Yeah, yeah. Trees give off oxygen. Oxygen, yeah, yeah. Why the fuck do we cut down all the trees? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, that makes stupid, no right? fucking logical yeah, yeah. sense. And then everybody got so upset when the fucking uh, rainforest in Brazil was on fire. Was it Brazil? Yeah, Brazil, yeah. Brazil, and it was like, that's the lungs of the earth. I'm like, y'all cut your fucking lungs out every day. Every that's day. why corona is a respiratory disease. Ooh, the earth can't breathe. Ooh. Can't breathe either, motherfuckers. Speak God. I don't know. I just, made God? I, just, I just came up with that one. <laughs> Third eye, God. Whoa, baby. Joe Rogan's logo, God damn it. Third eye out this motherfucker. Yo, it's it could be, though. though. It's it like you're cutting be. down all the fucking trees to build Starbucks, bro. Yeah, dude. Why There's are we doing that? I don't know, man. It's like, it's like, um, and maybe this is the problem with, with, uh, capitalism and i'm not trying to get all woke about anti-capitalism like i believe in capitalism 100 but maybe the issue is that like capitalism forces you into this mindset and behavior where you you're literally thinking about the next check and the next move and how do i make more money like we we're talking about the economy it always has to be moving we have to be consuming and spending whereas maybe another form of living we could sit back and go hey we don't need that extra dollar why don't you just let that tree keep growing bro yes you know what i'm saying there's like a more holistic approach yes. to the earth and maybe that's what Maybe Somebody that's what told me viruses do. Bonang told me that in uh, South Africa, in, in South Africa, if you build on, and I'm probably fucking this all up, but when when you when you build on land, if there's a tree there, if you take that tree down to build, you, you have to you got to replant that fucking tree. You got to plant another goddamn tree, yo. That's smart. That's yes, smart. man. That's really it's just, smart. It's just, yo, it's just simple. If the, yeah, if the trees sense. are giving enough oxygen and we're giving the trees carbon dioxide, why the yeah. fuck would we cut down all the trees and then complain about the air being shitty? Yeah. Complain about people having breathing problems or respiratory problems. Like, we're doing that to ourselves. Yeah. It's fucking stupid, bro. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Yeah, we can't look into the future, man. It's a, it's a tough thing. And, and we should be able to because we live in luxury. Like, I understand motherfuckers that, like, live in desperate places how they can't look into the future because yeah you're trying to make it into tomorrow but like if you and i are sitting here going well i want to put some money in my retirement fund that means we plan on making it to retirement so if we could plan on making it to retirement we got to plan on the world and not only the world the people that are in it the environment all these types of things we got to make sure that those things are livable as well by the time we retire we got to plan we got to plan for the Earth's future, the way we plan for our own futures. I think that whole concept of, um, you know, we're going to die one day and we're not going to be here because the Earth is billions of years old. Like, I think that sometimes we get so caught up in our temporary existence that we really don't give a fuck how we treat the Earth. We treat this yeah. shit like an Airbnb, bro. Yeah. We do. We treat it like some shit. Like, you know how you, you, know how you was young? And we it's are like, getting a bad review. That's you're what getting the a bad fucking is, review, bro. bro. We're getting one star, bro. You're treating this shit like a city bike. Yeah. You're not wiping it down. You farting all over it. You coughing. <laughs> you fucking don't care if you bump into it. Like Chris said, oh, Lord. Chris just texted me. Chris said they cut down the trees in Amazon to create grazing for cattle, which is why people like Russell say eating less meat is good for the environment. Okay, makes sense. There is an argument for that for sure. 
Not mad that makes sense. But then again, vegans just eat the environment, so they're probably bad for it. Y'all eating fucking trees too, Chris. Vegans, they only eat trees, bro. It's just lettuce and cabbage and shit. They literally are eating all the shit that helps us breathe. Yo, vegans want us to die, bro. How do vegetables feel about that? No, seriously, I want like see, we I think we don't we don't even though vegetables are living creatures too. Hey, dude, vegetables are so resilient. You ever eat corn and it comes out in your shit? <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> I'm not going to die. die. Yeah. <laughs> that, that fucking corn is holding on to that goddamn shit log. <laughs> this is our only hope to freedom. <laughs> this is our way to freedom. <laughs> I'm back, baby. <laughs> it's like Jason. Corn is looking the around Jason for your brothers. Vegetables, looking bro. around for your brothers, and you just realize it's just you and a couple cousins. <laughs> a little piece of lettuce, like you where, made it too. Where do we go from here? <laughs> Listen, salute to CVS, too. I got to put CVS in the Positively Brilliant. They're hiring 50,000 workers, and they're giving bonuses to employees. Um, salute to Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, Joel Embiid stepped up, gave a half a million dollars to the staffers, mm. and the Sixers was like, why the fuck aren't we paying our staffers? So they decided to continue to pay their staffers. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, these are billion-dollar organizations. These are billion-dollar companies. Being, being able to pay your staff for a couple of months is not going to hurt you at fucking all. And I think it gains amazing goodwill. Like you find out a lot about like your employer in a time like this. Yes. You know what I mean? Like when literally everybody is getting fired from their jobs and or getting salary decrease. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. If that's not happening to you, because here's the thing. If you're a business right now, you are losing money. You are losing money actively every single day. You are losing money. So now all that money that's coming out to be paid is coming out of your pocket. Absolutely. Absolutely. Find out. And some people don't want to do that shit. Um, I, I don't know whether to put this under the what a fucking idiot, but the guy, a man in Arizona, he drank um, fish tape cleaner to protect him from the coronavirus. How'd it go? He died. He's dead. Hmm. He's out of here. Hmm. So, I mean, technically he is kind of protected because he's in a better place now and he's with God and he doesn't have to worry about things like that anymore. I mean, he can't get corona. He, he did find a way to not get corona. You did find a way to not get corona. I wonder about stuff like that, though. Like, I wonder if people are in such, um, like, you're in such bad shape. Like, is the coronavirus beating you up that bad that you, like, man, fuck it. Or you don't want to catch it that bad that you, like, fuck it. You're willing to try anything. Because, you know, like, Donald Trump got on TV and he shouted out that fucking, uh, what's that shit called? Hydro queen. A hydro oh, chloroquine. Chloroquine. Yeah, and that yeah, shit, yeah. like, everybody ran to go buy it. Like, I bought some oh. shit off eBay. That I thought was chloroquine. <laughs> it was just Clorox. I don't know what the fuck that shit was. Some type of queen. Some something. It's like a dietary supplement. But I bought it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because you just yeah. never know. And when you don't know, you're just looking you for any form of hope, bro. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. There's a uh, Elon Musk tweeted out the chloroquine. He was, I think, the first person to throw that out there. Really? Yeah. It's just a tricky time, man. Because like, as as dangerous as this disease is, right, and, or virus is, and as serious as we pretend to take it right i don't think it's really going to be serious until somebody that we know dies from it because there are all these people dying but we don't have any connection to them so in our heads we're like man it's just the flu if you're young man. you don't think the people you don't think all those people getting sick like the idris l because you know america is an, an, is obsessed with celebrity sick. culture so the idris, idris looking l great tom hanks looking great it's like Slim we need to see struggle and like we need to see something. We need to see something that puts fear in us. When you see Idris in his living room with his fine ass girlfriend, you're like, I want some Corona. That looks all right. Yeah, that's why I was happy. Um, not happy, but um, Slim Thug called the Breakfast Club this morning because he got he tested positive, and he actually had symptoms. Ah, you know what I'm saying? We'll okay, because yeah, all of these said. people, all of these people, are like, oh, we don't even have no symptoms. Symptom Slug was like, no, I had a headache, I had a crazy fever. You know what I'm saying? So he said yeah. I went to go get checked because he was like, he's a hypochondriac. Right. He went to go get checked. And by the way, he said he was doing everything he was supposed to be doing. He said, I was not one of these people not taking it serious. He said, I have my mask. I have my gloves. Only time I left the house was to go get something to eat. I took my ass back home. I've been staying in the crib. Yeah. He, he said he'd been doing everything he was supposed to be doing. And he, he tested positive, but he had symptoms. Uh, DJ Webstar, who, um, you know, back in the day, he, he produced the hit song Chicken Noodle Soup. Chicken you know Noodle I mean? Soup. Chicken yeah. Noodle Soup. He caught it. He said he had real bad symptoms, chills, high fever, the wow. cough that wouldn't go away, all of that type of shit. And he said he just thought it was the flu, yeah. but it turned out he tested positive for coronavirus. So it's good to hear that you need those to hear people the bad have stories. actual symptoms. 
There's a, you know, Carl Anthony Towns, he plays power forward. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. So his mom is in a coma in the hospital right now with it. See what I'm saying? That is, I think, the first story that's going to resonate because it's somebody that we know and it's happening to their mom. So it's like, oh, shit. What if it happened to my friend's mom? What if it happened to my mom? Like, all of a sudden it becomes real. I, I just, for whatever reason, we need to see a real life situation, I think, for, for people to take things seriously. I think that's why Tom Hanks said he had it. I don't even think Tom Hanks or his wife had it. I think that the government or whoever was just like, hey, can you do us a favor and say that you got it? Because people know who you are. Maybe they'll take this shit serious if you say you got it. You believe that? I, I was going to put that under the what a fucking idiot section that people actually believe celebrities are signing up, you know, are getting paychecks to say they got this disease. No, paycheck. One no paycheck. I think it's literally just a favor. It's basically like, hey, we need to promote this. We need people to take this seriously. Tom, you are the most famous person. Can you just say you got this shit? You're at the at risk age. Say you have it. And then people would be like, whoa, if it happened to Tom Hanks, it could happen to me. The problem is nothing bad happened to Tom Hanks. Not yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think he, a, he got through it. So you're basically saying that they, they offering out the same endorsement deals they offered Magic in the 90s. <laughs> people said the same thing about Magic, bro. It was like, yo, Magic don't really got HIV AIDS or HIV. They just said they wanted him to say he had it because he's like a manly man. People thought that HIV was a gay disease. Yeah, but, yeah, but after that, you still got it. Like Corona, you come back from like, I'll dap up Tom Hanks in a couple months. You know what I mean? Like when I dap up magic, I'm still like, all right now. Yeah. And all you fucking, all you fucking idiots who say stuff like y'all kept posting that meme about magic Johnson with the mask saying, why does magic have a mask on? It's because HIV compromises your immune system. Yeah. Okay. Bro. If you fuck around and catches Corona, magic will be out of here, bro. Game over, dude. Like, stop, man. What's wrong with y'all? Like use a little fucking common sense. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I was... I, 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 I'm with you though. I just don't, I don't need a celebrity. To make me know shit is real. Like, I can look at that family in Jersey. Like, it's a family in Jersey, bro. They lost four people. Hey. Four. Out of here. Family of 11 lost four. Hey. And it was like back to back to back. It was like a, a brother, a sister, the mom, and then somebody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like when I see stuff like that, I'm like, oh, shit. If I watch, you know, if I'm, I'm looking at the news and they're talking about the little girl in Atlanta who's 12 years old, who's in the ICU fighting for Corona. I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't know 12 year olds could get Corona. You know what I'm saying? So all, yeah. of, all of that stuff makes you take this shit way more serious, especially when you got, you know, a child at the house. And yeah. yeah. So, so I don't I don't need a celebrity to catch it. Uh, salute to everybody who does. Salute to everybody who's waiting on Cardi B to announce she got it or whoever. But I don't need that. All right, I'm. I, I get it. This shit is You're, real. But you you have a natural, uh, like heightened paranoia of, of things, right? Like, Absolutely. Like you are, you're doomsday ready in a way where you, you think anything could happen because realistically in your life, anything has happened. Like it's rare people just run up to you and try to punch you on the street as a human being. It's happened to you. Yeah. So yeah, now yeah. you go, oh shit, I've experienced a pretty worst case scenario. So nothing's surprising anymore. You know I what's think crazy? The person is, is, is it feels like they're invincible. What you saying? Everything you're saying is true. I um, I strangely, bro, I strangely have not had any really bad anxiety about this whole situation. I've been you, like, you already dealt with it. I've been strangely calm about this shit, bro. Because you're taking it serious. You're like most people who have anxiety about this shit aren't taking it serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what but you're saying. But if you take it seriously, you're in the crib. You got the food. You don't need to go outside. You probably got a little land so you can walk in the backyard, et cetera. Like, and also, it's not like you need to be around people. Like, you don't mind being around your family and your daughters, from what I understand. Yeah, I'm a you know, cancer. I'm a homebody. I love this shit. This shit, because for me, the one of the biggest sources of my anxiety is parental paranoia. So, like, when the kids are at school and I'm in the city. Now you get to know whether they're good. I'm, I know everybody's good. I'm good. They good. I ain't worried about not a goddamn thing. But I just, I honestly have just, I'm going to tell you what helped me a lot. The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak mm. Chopra. Okay. You know, salute, salute to the homie uh, Debbie Brown. You know, my sister Debbie Brown. She, she's been telling me about this book for years. Said this book changed her life years ago. I just got around to reading it a couple of weeks ago because, you know, we, we really don't have shit to do. So I'm just catching up on a lot of things in life. And like I, I listened to it yeah. and I thought it was too short. I listened to it on Audible and I'm like, Damn, it's, it's only an hour and 26 minutes. But then I bought it and it's just as short. Like it's only like 160 pages. Yeah. But he has this one law, man. It's law number six. It's the law of detachment. Mm. And he just talks about leaning into the uncertainty of everything. Love it. 
just lean into the Love uncertainty it. of it all. He was like, yo, when he said, like, when there's problems, when there's chaos, when there's turmoil, when there's confusion, just lean into it all because eventually there will be a problem. I mean, a solution in that problem. And that's yeah. honestly been my mindset. I'm like, fuck it. Like, cause what can you do? What can you do you about this shit? You can't do nothing, bro. Nothing. There's nothing you can do. But maybe leaning into that, like you said, maybe that's the right. Yo, that's a good idea. Maybe we should do that. What What should we give the people this week? Um, like good Corona distraction content, like books, shows, any of those types of things. Like, how do we fill their schedules with things that they can check out, indulge in? Oh, I can tell you everything. I'm on. All I right, can. I, I. I. I can tell you. Um, you want to do a book? You want? You want this to be the deep dive? Let's maybe do a little deep dive on that. That'd be let's good. Let's do the fuck. Let's let this be the deep dive because I'm with you on this. Um, okay, go. Creature comforts, right? When I tell you that I get up in the morning and I watch ESPN. Yeah. The reason I watch ESPN is because going to ESPN gives me a sense of normalcy because that's something that I would do any other time. You know what I mean? So what I would tell everybody out there is don't break your sense of normalcy. Try to keep a routine. Try to keep that's a schedule good. as much as possible. That's right? And if that's part of your schedule, if going to ESPN, watching First Take is part of your schedule, do it. Another thing that I picked up, um, I, I've been watching a lot of Disney Plus, right? Okay. Because when you're sitting at home alone and you're just being still, you really start to hear those voices in your head. And you start to hear people like Andrew Schultz saying to you, why the fuck you got Disney Plus? There's nothing on Disney Plus. And I'm like, that's not true. Disney Plus, like, but I had to go make sure, right? So, because I've been defending this shit based off what they have to come, yeah. right? Not what yeah. they have. Yeah. So I went on the Marvel thing of Disney Plus, and I've been hooked because I've been watching those. Man, I've been watching those old X Men cartoons that I used to watch when I was young, bro. When Gambit was actually good. When I've Gambit was Gambit fucking movie, good, bro. bro. And yo, it made me feel so bad about this Wolverine tattoo I got on my arm because Wolverine was pussy in the X-Men cartoon. Wolverine, I'm going to tell you what's so fucked up. Wolverine is gangster in the comics, right? He's, yeah. a, he's, he's, un, he's a fucking beast. And that goddamn X-Men cartoon, you ever seen that meme where he's like holding the picture and they put different people in the picture, but in the cartoon, it's a picture of Jean Grey. Okay. He really was pussy whipped. He's and never, pussy. Got, never got none of the pussy. And if you watch the cartoon, he gets fucked up all the time. Like every other episode, Wolverine is hurt. And I'm like, (laughs) Wolverine got healing powers. Like he heals instantly. Everything heals but his heart. Like what the fuck, bruh? And it's, you got others. You got other villains calling him old. Yeah. Like, you're like you fucking old. He's not even old man Logan yet. So yeah. I'm sitting there looking like, yo, they really made Wolverine look soft as fuck in this cartoon. I thought he was badass in the cartoon. I no, I man, no, I he's think not. He was the only cartoon with forearm hair. So I think for some reason I think that made him like badass. I'm gonna tell you when he was tough when he went to Canada. He's definitely the toughest motherfucker in Canada. Oh, they had an episode man. when he went to Canada and he fought like the Vindicator and Alpha Flight. He was uh-huh. fucking them up. But when it comes to them goddamn American superheroes and them goddamn superheroes in other countries, mm-hmm. always getting his ass kicked. Uh- <laughs> always getting his motherfucking ass kicked. But I've been watching that. But that's been a creature comfort too because that brings me back to my childhood, right? Yeah, there's like imprinting from like fun times. Yes, yeah, that's why I think D, times. That's, that's why D Nice felt so good. Yes, D-Nice felt so good because I was sitting there thinking like, man, if you're 20 years old, you're really not appreciating any of this shit D Nice is doing. Right, all of these songs are old. Right, stuff that I grew up on and the stuff that my parents used to listen to. So it takes me down this memory lane, and it makes me remember a time when things were just good and normal. So I look at this situation like almost being in jail. Your body is kind of trapped, but your mind your is mind can free. go wherever. Yeah. There's something interesting about D Nice that I was I was trying to break down why it was so uh, like beautiful, and obviously it st- it tapped into this connectivity thing that we all want. We all want to feel like we're doing something together. But I also think what it did is he recreated the club. Like when you're in the club, you're in like a nice nightclub, right? You look over at the bottle service and you're like, oh shit, there's 50 Cent, right? Oh yep. shit, there's T.I., oh shit, whatever. When you're watching D-Nice's live, all of a sudden you see the comments, you're like, oh shit, Michelle Obama's in here. Oh shit, Oprah's in here. Oh shit, Charlamagne's in here. Like you start seeing these people like you would see them at the club and you're like, oh, they're bored alone at home just like me. Yes. Everybody's going through this. Yes. It was just this really nice togetherness, this moment of togetherness. That, and I think that's what's going to win during this time. Like, if you could find real, unique, organic ways to get everybody to experience the same shit. Bro, humans need each other. Yes. 
And I think that's what that's one of the things that God is trying to show us throughout this whole coronavirus epidemic. I don't like the distance. I like distance when 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 I personally need distance. Yes. But think about it. We interact with people so much. We don't even we take that for granted. You know what yep. I'm saying? Like every day I'm constantly around people. Like every yeah. freaking day. Like we're the guys who when we walk down the street people want to come up to us. Like we get we get bombarded with people invading our space all the time. I right. don't even think I want to call it invading the space anymore. It's just that we are sharing the space. And now right. that we're not able to share the space, you know, when we want to it feels kind of strange. And, you know, the thing, even, even going back to D-Nice, um, the thing that made D-Nice so special is I think it would be the same if you decided to do, like, if you, if you got on live and you said, I'm doing 15, I'm going to do a 15 minute stand up special. Yeah. You. Yeah. And you did it on a stage. Every like, you like, I'm going to do a 15 minute stand up special. Yeah. That shit would rip so hard because you you're a comedian you've been building this up for years and years and years i don't think people realize d nice is a celebrity dj right he's been a celebrity dj for 15 years every 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 year when i go to anguilla when i go to anguilla for new year's eve yeah there's for the three out of the last four years there's been this party at this place called the reef kenny burns has hosted it d nice has dj it we go there every year i was there this past new year's eve you know what i'm saying so what d nice did on instagram was was, was his, his him being dope wasn't unique to me because we know D-Nice is a, is a dope DJ but when you see Michelle Obama jump in the live it's because he's played for Michelle Obama before. Yeah, yeah, when you see yeah. Diddy jump in the live it's because yeah. he's played for Diddy before. When you see yeah. Rihanna in the live they've all been the parties that D-Nice has, has played. You know what I mean? Yes. And plus it was just you caught lightning in a bottle. It's a random Saturday night everybody's at home and yeah. the time he spent What time? He was on there for like nine, ten hours. So, so throughout that time, anybody could pop in. It's so yes. little an investment. It's so little. You don't got to leave your house. You don't got to get your shoes on. You don't got to do nothing but literally tap a button on Instagram. And now you're in. You're at the club. With and you're giving Michelle people time Obama. to talk. Yes, you're giving people time to talk. Like, yo, de nice on, de nice on, de yeah. nice on, de nice on. Make sure you get the, yo, you give people 10 hours to fucking join you at some point. Because yeah. everybody just wanted to say they were a part of this, part of the experience. Yes, it didn't, that's it. It didn't matter. It didn't matter when you were there. You didn't have to be there when Michelle was there. You was on. You know what I'm saying? You got yep. to see what the fuck de nice was doing. Yeah. That shit was beautiful, man. That shit was fucking beautiful. There's so, little things where I feel like, you know, there's these little Corona hacks I feel like you could take advantage of right now. Like, like my girl pointed this out to me. And, um, so really fancy restaurants, a lot of times they don't, uh, deliver or do to go. Right. You know, the places that you can barely get a reservation. It's so hard but yeah. because nobody can go eat there. They have to find a way to make a, you know, revenue during this time. So they've started delivering. So you and your wife, your girl, or you and your boys, whoever you're fucking quarantined with, you can get delivery from Carbone or Mineta Tavern, like these places that you could never get a reservation for unless you're a fucking famous person. They're going to bring it to your house. So what I was telling, like me and my girl do is we just have a date night where we actually get dressed up. Like I put on clothes, like I'd be going out. She puts on something nice when she goes out. So we're not bummy in the sweatpants. And then we have an inside date night. You know, and That's I feel dope. like, yeah, it's just like a nice little thing to break up the monotony because it's so easy to like stop shaving. It's so easy to stop showering, like you said. It's so easy to fall into this feeling of, uh, of like claustrophobia. And then I feel like you start projecting the way you feel inside. So like doing those little things, like going to D Nice's thing or even getting some nice food ordered in, like I feel like those things have kept my mental strong throughout. Keep some day. normalcy, man. I put on yeah. a hoodie. I put on this, this new hoodie today just because I'm doing this podcast. I've been really? walking around the fucking wife beaters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, 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 you can't. And by the way, you can't hide from the real you at a time like this. What do you mean? Have, by you, that? have you seen Kevin Hart lately? Yeah. Look First of all, let's, let's, matter of fact, let's let's pay some bills, and we can let's pay some bills. And we can come back and talk about uh Kevin Hart and all of them. Oh, and we funny. do um, things you won't care about celebs, next week. We're gonna find out which celebs really got hair. We're gonna yes. find celebs, which celebs are using plug, dyeing their shit. 
Oh, let's that's pay, good, man. Let's, let's pay some. Let's just pause and pay some bills, man. Let's talk about Boost Mobile. Okay. Okay. Uh, with Boost Mobile, you finally have everything you could want in a wireless carrier. Okay. With no annual service contract, Boost Mobile offers a range of data plans and the latest phones from top brands at affordable prices. Their network is super reliable and super fast, so you can post up and watch the game with screen brilliant idiots almost anywhere. I mean, goddamn, the phone is phones are very important right now. Okay, because that's where all the content is. If you're trying to get that sense of normalcy we're talking about, that you got to have the right smartphone. And we all know smartphones are expensive, but wouldn't it be nice to not force the family to wrestle over one phone? Uh, step up with Boost Mobile, and you can get four free Samsung Galaxy A20 phones when you switch. And if you switch to Boost Mobile today, you'll get four lines for just $25 per Per line per month, all right? Step up with Boost Mobile and switch today. If you want a super reliable, super fast nationwide network to keep you connected, switch now to Boost Mobile. This is a limited time offer while supplies last. New customers only. Requires port and activation from eligible carrier. One free device per line. Users using more than 35 gigabytes of data during a billing cycle may be deprioritized during times of network congestion. Offers and coverage not available everywhere. Visit BoostMobile.com, our retailer, for full details. You might, you might as well knock out the Squarespace real quick too. Well, guys, if you are at home with nothing to do, uh, maybe you take that idea that you always had for a website and you actually make one. Turn that dream into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project. You got the time now. You can launch it. Whether you're looking to start a business, showcase uh, your work, publish content, sell products, and more, Squarespace is the tool for you. Beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks. You can easily make a beautiful website yourself. Matter of fact, even if you're not making a website for yourself, you can get good at making websites so that when shit gets back to uh, normal, if you will, and other people need a website, guess what? They have a website creator, which is you. Go practice. You can practice for free on the website. Uh, on Squarespace. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box, and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple, and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people, from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms, to turn great ideas into something real. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial today. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash IDIOT, offer code IDIOT, and we're back. Let's get into some church announcements. Um, do you have any church announcements? <laughs> Man, uh, yo, I do. I got. Uh, I'm not, I don't have the exact dates, but basically everything, every comedy uh, uh, date that I have now is rescheduled through May um, at the moment. It might be through June with how this is going. but. Um, I think I think things will really get back to swing in in J July, the beginning of July. I think that's when we'll be at live events again. But we're gonna hold on to the June dates for now. Uh, everything is rescheduled, so you guys can go. You know, um, I'll give you those dates very soon. We're just locking in and everything, and then the special is included in that. So we're gonna shoot the special at a later date. I believe it's gonna be November because I want to do it after the election because I don't want to record a special before the election and then by the time it's edited and it comes out it's after the election and then this huge transition or change may have happened in the country and i can't in some way address that energy Absolutely. like i'm almost glad that i didn't record a special before the corona thing be this corona pandemic because what if you did it before and then you put it out and you're talking about how great the world is and how we need to be great or like you, you know your energy don't match what the people feel yeah and i feel like my my competitive advantage with with comedy has always been like for whatever reason i can sense what people feel and need you know so it's like i don't ever want to put out content that doesn't reflect that feeling that they have that they might maybe can't articulate but it's inside them you yeah know? i mean this is this is a defining moment in american history right and if you're a comedian you know i feel like uh comedians just like musicians they're like record keepers yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you got to yes. keep a record of this. You can't have a stand-up come out this year, especially in November, and not talk about the Rona. You can't not talk about the That might be got, the name of it. You got to talk about that Rona. That Rona, bro. That Corona Quimby, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> She's a fucking pest. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, I don't want to talk bad about the Corona because I don't know how that motherfucker gets inside of you. So I got nothing but respect for the Rona. Rona, I respect you, dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just please, when you, when you finish done doing what you're doing, you know... Just let us know you're leaving so we can get back to normal. 
that's all we want to get back to normal, man. What about you, dog? What kind of, oh, other church announcements. Obviously, the Corona's Got Talent show. And then we do a nightly show here out of the studio uh, that we haven't named. It's still unnamed, but some people call it a Red Table Cough. Some people call it the Quarantine Chronicles. <laughs> Red Some people cough. call it Kung Flu Hustle. There's a lot of different names for it. But <coughs> hey, stop coughing now. My fault. Hey, 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 hey. Coughing is like gunshots. <laughs> it's like some Theo Vaughn said it's the new N-word. <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes everybody uncomfortable. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if a white person does it, it's like, yo, did you just call me the N-word? If a black person does it around a white person, they're like, yo, bro, bro, that's yeah. on you, bro. <laughs> no, no, the white people are like, well, why can he do it? But I can't. <laughs> 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 yeah, that yeah, is so, fucked up. It is fucked up how we cough and sneeze and shame and during goddamn allergy season. Yeah, but that because we're not gonna get it, bro. Come on, let's be honest. It's okay to do a little cough and sneeze shaming right now, especially if you're in public. I don't know if we're not gonna get it. I was I I'm I've talking never about allergies, no more. not Rona. Oh, well, I got allergies. Oh, all right. Well, then cough yeah, yeah. is all you want. I got allergies. I've been good this week, though. I've been good. I've been good in the house. I'm going to tell you something. I was good. Mm. I went outside yesterday, though, to take the trash out. And it's like all that cold air for like that 10, 30 seconds jumped inside my body. Mm. And when I came back in the house, I could feel it inside of me. And I started like immediately coughing again. I'm like, man, maybe there is something to fucking keeping this heat, Mm. keeping your body heated. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I was like, should I go get the blow dryer and fucking put it up my nose like that dude in Florida said you should do? Hey, do whatever Fuck. you need to do to get through this, but hold in them fucking coughs and sneezes. You got to act like a white guy listening to DMX song. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's certain bars you can't spit in their entirety. You just got to you just gotta stop and hesitate. <laughs> you, you can't. You can't. If you're doing jig, uh, what's, what's my, my motherfucking, motherfucking name? My nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta say the N word like this. You gotta, yeah. <laughs> you gotta muscle that shit. You gotta dab, dab on that you gotta N word like you coughing. <laughs> All right, let's do shit you won't care about next week. Uh, first of all, salute to Kevin Hart and his beautiful wife and Nico. They're expecting another baby. Oh, um, shit, during the Rona. Yeah, I'm just I'm saluting them just because I want to talk about how uh, I love the gray hair realness that Kevin Hart is giving. Oh yeah, um, Kevin Hart in two weeks is aged, you know, like a president that's been in the White House for eight years. Um, it's, it's unbelievable, bro. Like it's like, yo, I I, I don't want to live I don't want to live that life anymore, man. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to have to always get the baldy, always get my beard shaved. You know what I mean? I've never had to do the Beijing, the blackout. I don't want to have to do all of that because when shit like this happens, people are like they feel duped. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's the morning after with the girl is, you met at the club. Yes, man. And it's, yo, I can't believe Instagram hasn't come out with the fucking haircut, shave, and Beijing filter, bro. Where's the blackout filter, Instagram? The quarantine filter. Come on, man. They need a quarantine filter. Yes. Oh, that's genius. You show Instagram a picture of what you looked like before the quarantine. Yes. And then it's a filter. They put that thing right back on you. Yes. Yo, you got to do that. That's genius. Kevin Hart looked like, Kevin Hart really looks like an OG from Philly. Who retired to open up a steak, a cheesesteak place, bro? Yeah, he like looks he's like candy out, man. Yeah, he's the candy man for real, for real. Like, but it's, I mean, it's good though because Kev is just able to. Yeah, when when this shit is over, Kev gonna look twenty five again. Yeah, he's gonna rebound so fast. Like, by the way, see- and you might be watching him on Instagram. It's probably it's probably movie executives like, holy shit, we could have been getting Kev to play these grandfather roles. <laughs> For so fucking long, <laughs> and now now we can finally get Kev. Yo, get cast Kevin some of these for some of these older roles. Yo, do you think the quarantine is going to show that black does crack? It's going to show that. Uh, it's it's going to show that. You know what it's going to show? It's going to show that black cracks. But what you don't see when the black cracks is you know the people coming over to do the maintenance and filling in those cracks, which you know, yeah, you know various products. Oh, you know what I'm saying. I have something for you as far as distraction. Have you seen the show Tiger King yet? Nah, it keeps popping up on my Netflix like I'm oh watching it, though. Oh, my God, bro. I mean, Akash said it perfectly. He said it's a white trash Game of Thrones. It's a reality show. But oh, it's it, a reality show. It's a reality show, uh, or a documentary, a reality documentary. It's seven episodes. They're like 40-minute episodes. It's not that long at all. I promise you it is the wildest thing you'll see on fucking TV. Really? It involves uh, murder plots. Everybody owns exotic pets and animals. It also has the guy who Scarface is based on who also owns a zoo. Like, 
crazy fucking tiger shit and hillbillies missing teeth, addicted to meth, a gay guy who only fucks straight dudes and marries them. It is the craziest fucking show, and it is perfectly timed for this quarantine. If you want to see how white trash white people get, like you thought you knew white trash when you were living in South Carolina. You didn't know nothing, my friend. I didn't know it was about white people. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought it was something that Netflix threw out there. And, you know, people be like, yo, watch Tiger Kid. I'd be like, yo, bro, stop being racist at a time like this, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, like I, I really honestly thought that they put it out there. To, the like, sequel to Tiger Mom. Yeah, Tiger I thought that King. they put it out there to like because they were capitalizing off all the attention that China and Asians are getting right now. I didn't, oh, I didn't, I, I had no idea it was about hilarious. white people. Not a single Asian in the whole thing, dude. But seriously, really? go watch it. It's unbelievable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that out. You and know who looks like a one, the the Outsiders on HBO. You see that? I haven't one watched that either. No. Yo, the Outsiders. Go watch that one. That one's good too. Really. What's that good. about? I don't want to give it away, but uh, basically, um, some someone gets murdered. A little kid gets murdered and um and uh the person they accuse of doing it they have on film they have on camera they have all these other things uh they have him they have proof they have dna they have everything that's him but that person is also on camera dna and everything in a completely different city at the exact same time wow so it's like how the fuck could these two things happen at the same time I got to check that out. Also, yeah. I don't know if you've been watching DJ Khaled <laughs> on Instagram, but he looks like a, 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 a penguin that is absolutely about to, like, just destroy some shit. Like, a penguin. Because <laughs> Khaled got the wild grays. Like, when you get those grays on the side right here, yeah, yeah, you just yeah. automatically look like some type of supervillain, bro. Yeah, like a detective like, from the 50s. You, yeah, <laughs> a, a crooked detective. Yeah, a detective from the 50s or a fucking supervillain, bro. Like, yeah. like just like, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah, like, who was the, the guy who was like the... Uh... The uh, the guy who ran the newspaper in Spider. Oh yeah, the Daily Bugle. <laughs> the Daily you Bugle. Know, yeah, uh, uh, in Spider Man. I can't remember his fucking name. That's exactly what the fuck DJ Khaled looks <laughs> like, the bro. Editor of the Daily Bugle. That's man. what he looks like. He looked like a fucking penguin that runs a newspaper. <laughs> he looks like the editor of a fucking newspaper. He looks like the Daily Penguin. Uh, giving well, you your coronavirus updates. Oh, uh, hey, salute the Pornhub. Shit, you won't care about next week. Pornhub is joining the. Uh, coronavirus relief by offering a free premium subscription description to everyone for the next 30 days now are you whacking off no nah, i haven't been fucking bro you haven't I, been fucking no nah, i've definitely been practicing social distancing when it comes to the sex really why not explain that i haven't thought about it it hasn't been on my mind i'm gonna be honest with you like um you know we we, we got the you know the kid who took the kids out of school like a week ago and i've just been kind of like Focusing on this new normal, I haven't really gotten into to that aspect of shit yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I haven't gotten into the. We haven't added that. That we haven't added that to the repertoire. I don't know how to how to create the normalcy with that. Quite Do you think yet. that 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 is going to create strain on relationships? No, because I think at a time like this, man, I think that we're going to be looking for much deeper connections than just sex. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you've been with your woman for a long time. I think that um, emotional connections, mental connections, spiritual connections, like, you know, we played a family game the other day where it was like, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite color? Stuff like that. You know what I mean? And I mean, I think those are the things you you actually take for granted. Like when what's the last that? time you... What's the family game? It was a game my daughter made up, but she wrote down questions like, What's your favorite food? What's your favorite color? So everybody had to answer <clears throat> these questions about each other. So you're learning you know? about yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's dope because you realize, of course, this is your family, but it's a lot of shit that you just know by just being around your family, but you've never heard them put a label on it and say, oh, this is my favorite thing. This is her favorite yeah. thing. You know what I mean? But I think yeah. like those are good, uh, those are good bond scripting games. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I just think that we got to tap into something deeper than just, sex at a moment like this you have a, a long relationship with your woman so it's not essentially defined by sex but i do think that there's like a potential for struggle here because it's easy to like not fuck you and your girl not fuck when like you guys are really busy and that kind of stuff right like yeah. oh we're tired we had a long day all these kind of things right but then i think when you're with each other with nothing to do all day and you still don't fuck, I think it's possible that people see it as a form of rejection 
right? Because there's really no excuse. We're just, it's just us. We're around each other all day. And I wonder if people will realize like, hey, your body is reacting to something very different. It depends what you're doing though. Like for me, man, it's like, you know, me and the wife are, you know, we're, we're, we're sharing information. That's, I mean, that's something we do anyway, but it's just, it's just amplified more. It's multiplied now. Like we're reading yeah. books and we watching TV and we're talking, you know what I mean? And yeah. It's just different, you know? Like, it's not even... I, I, li- I honestly haven't even... I think I might have. I mean, I thought about I mean, I might have thought about it, but it's nothing that I've even wanted to act on. I haven't had the... Have I had the desire? I don't know, bro. Isn't that weird? I haven't thought... Like, I'm, I haven't thought about it. I might have thought about it one day when I was on Pornhub watching Granny Porn. You love that that's about it. porn, bro. Are you preparing? I'm not preparing, but that granny porn is very interesting because I've never, se- I've never watched it. I've never, I never thought about older people having sex. Yo, these older women, yeah, be getting it the fuck in, yeah, and it's yeah. these young dudes that love sleeping with these old women. I'm talking about grandma, bro. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about seventy five years old, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Taking that young cock and not <laughs> giving a fuck about anything. Like, like yo, this this one old woman who just loves to. She don't even, it's, it's not even that they just running trains on her. She just loves to sleep with two guys at the same time, right? And you right. can just see the I don't give a fuckness in her eyes. Yeah. And these older women that are letting themselves be recorded, they don't give a fuck. They're old. They don't give a shit. Like, what are you yeah. going to do? You're going you gonna to put this out and say, look what I did to somebody's grandma? Like, nobody yeah. gives a shit, bro. So do you think yeah. you're watching it now because all the old people might be dead because of corona, so you just want to get this in while it's still around? Got to give them their views while they're still here. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, it's just something I've never watched before. It's just a new level of porn I never watched before. Yeah. So speaking of what you just said, uh, things you won't care about next week, but we probably should. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick of, of Texas. Yeah. He was on Fox News last night basically echoing Donald Trump's sentiments and just like, look, man, you senior citizens have to be willing to die to get the economy back on track. That's, ba- that's essentially what he said. You know what I mean? So I was curious about that, though. Like, a lot of times we make decisions for people uh, uh, based on how we feel emotionally, right? So right now we're all making this decision. We're all going, hey, we, we don't want to die. So old people, they probably don't want to die. So we got to save these old people. I'm really curious if we asked people 80 and up, hey, do you, uh, are you willing to risk getting corona or maybe you guys self-quarantine or something like that and then everybody else goes back to work um, or would you like us to make sure that you're safe and you are protected and then we destroy the global economy? I wonder if they, I wonder if they would say, hey, I've lived a great life. Uh, I don't want to affect these younger people's opportunity to live a great life too. let us quarantine and and make sure you give us our food, give us our, you know, rations and we'll stay safe inside the apartment and make sure you check on us. But no, we don't want to fuck up the world for the youth. Listen, I wonder if they would say that, honestly, I don't know, but I know guys like Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who's 69, Donald Trump, who's like 73 years old. Mm -hmm. If y'all feel like senior citizens should die for the economy, then take the lead. Okay, like what do you, what do you know, when the economy starts, when the economy starts to collapse, y'all collapse with it. Y'all That's act like y'all point. not senior fucking citizens. Y'all senior citizens. So you, Donald Trump, you, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, talk to your base, talk to all those old people that like to wear MAGA hats in all these rural areas, yeah. and ask ask them if they want to clock out. Yeah, like listen, all you old people. Like old people that's like 70, 80 years old and, 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 and you think that older people should be gone because of the economy. Don't let it be my grandma or my granddad or yeah. my mom or my dad. Yeah. You want to make America great again? Here's your chance, buddy. Time yeah. to die. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what you going to do? Right. Straight up. You can't ask somebody if you're a leader, you can't ask somebody to do something that you're not willing to do. 100%. So if you, when you those got Dan Patrick, Donald Trump, if you're going to fix your mouth to say things like, look, senior citizens got to do what they got to do and, 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 and take the risk of catching Corona for the economy to be better. All right, senior citizen, go out there and shake some hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, do your part. Here's an interesting one. If this is a war against the virus, right? Okay. We accept that in war there are going to be casualties and people will die and there will be soldiers on the front line and those soldiers on the front line will die. We've always accepted this, accepted this throughout history, right? Mm-hmm. 
are they the soldiers on the front right line if this is a war and we're treating it like like such i think we're actually doing what italy did um there was a point in italy if i'm not mistaken where hospitals were just choosing you know, and treatment too, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I don't think that should be any government's that shouldn't be left up to any government because truthfully, we don't even know how coronavirus impacts people. At first, they were saying it was just impacting older people. But now we see a bunch of younger people getting it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you just simply don't know. I just think it's very um, it's very dangerous and irresponsible just to tell people we're going to open back up in Easter and just to go back out there and start living your regular every every everyday normal life when you really don't know how this disease impacts people yet you know what i'm yeah. saying so i just don't i don't i don't think it's worth it no personally yeah. i think they're lying to them i, I just think they're lying to them because they want to like they don't want to spook the market and they don't want to spook the employment records because once once everybody gets fired that stock market is going to take a historic dip bro and that's what Trump is trying to avoid. So I think he's trying to like mislead. He's like, no, we're going to be back in April for uh, Easter. And then all of a sudden Easter's going to come around. They're like, ah, well, it was a little early, probably uh, May. And then that's going to take a little longer. Ah, we'll be back in June. So I think he's just going to push it little by little and keep people kind of like holding on for dear, dear life. Because if they go, yo, it's down for two months, this shit coming to a screeching halt, bro. But I think it's two viruses out there, bro. Yeah, you were saying that last night. What do you mean by that? I think it's two viruses. I think it's one virus that's kind of like, kind of like, you know, mild. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it's another virus that's like Corona Plus. I really yeah. do. Like, I really, I think, the, I, think, I think it's the one virus that people get and they recover from after 14, 15 <laughs> days. Then I think it's the other virus that's really killing people. Like, really right. getting people to fuck up out of here in a real way. And either they know it's two viruses, but they don't want to say anything because they really don't want to spook people. Mm. Or this virus is mutating in a different way. Maybe it affects people's bodies differently. Maybe the way you get mm -hmm. corona and the way I get corona would be totally different. That makes sense. Though. I don't know. I just, it just, just seems weird. Like, it does seem like we're dealing with two different diseases. Because at first, it's just like, oh, it's okay. It's just like the flu, yada, 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 whatever. And then it's like, no, such and such got it on March 9th. They died on March 17th. They had no existing, no pre-existing health conditions. They were 44 years old. Like, rest in peace to DJ Black and Mild in New Orleans. You know, he got it on March 9th. Mm -hmm. And he died this past weekend. You know, I look at the, yeah. the, the principal in Brooklyn, 36 years old. Yeah. <laughs> she had no pre-existing conditions from what I read. I could be wrong. She got it. She died. Like, so it's just like, I just don't know. I just think, I really think it's two different diseases, bro. Yeah. No, it's possible. It is possible. I mean, who the fuck knows, man? There's so many different conspiracy theories about what this thing is. There's people out here saying that it was caused by 5G. I saw yeah. Carrie Hilson say that we should have put her under the what a fucking idiot. Uh, nah, because there's a couple of professors saying that as well. And the reason the conspiracy theory exists is because um, they say it has to do with like uh, anytime you've like affected the electromagnetic uh, field around the earth or like place an electromagnetic field on the earth, that there's been an adverse effect on uh, humans. Like the virus in your body is like your cells reacting to this, uh, this like um, adverse a stimulus and i'm gonna butcher this but um they're like they they're basically like what is the one city in the whole world that is completely blanketed in 5g new york nope what wuhan oh wuhan i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know what the fuck 5g is let's let's start let's back it's just Tell super me, fast <laughs> i'm just going along with the conversation what is that what is it it's i know what 4g super fast is. internet yeah so it's just even faster i guess but does you know, the so internet need to be any faster, bro? Say what? The internet does not. The internet does not need to be any faster. Man, I, we are talking to each other while looking at each other. I mean, I think this is enough. This is like, cool. I think Louis C.K. had a funny uh, joke where he's like, uh, he goes, "Do we really need any more porn? Like, haven't we done it all?" That's what they're <laughs> trying to get to, by the way. <laughs> What's that? They're trying to get to the point where I can take my dick yeah. and stick it through this computer screen. And put it in your mouth. <laughs> that's what they're trying to get to. They're really trying to get to that, bro. I'm telling you, that's what they're trying to get to. That's what they want. They want goddamn 69G. That's what they oh, fucking want. Bro. Is that why it's called Microsoft? <laughs> <laughs> they won't stop until it gets micro hard, goddamn it. <laughs> Holy but, shit. <laughs> but it's still micro? <laughs> it's still micro, okay? But until they get it micro hard, motherfucker, they will not stop. <laughs> shit. <laughs> that's exactly what this is, man. Talk about hard. Charlemagne, 
Have you heard of Blue Chew? Ooh. Blue Chew, guys. Uh, listen, you're at home. You got to satisfy your wife. Ladies, you got to satisfy your man. You want the best sex of your life. It's very simple. You get on that Blue Chew, okay? First, chewable tablet. It gives the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, all that stuff. I'm telling you, it's not a game. Best sex life in your life, uh, of your life. You just go for it. You get rock hard and deliver the goods. You're going to be at home a lot. You're going to have to do it. You're going to have to keep that partner you're satisfied. Don't make her think she don't love you. Give her the time of her life. Uh, Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at the pharmacy. It ships right to your door in a discreet package. They're made in the USA, and since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy, and best of all, there's no more awkwardness. Right now, special deal for listeners. You go to bluechew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code IDIOTS. Just pay $5 shipping. That's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com, promo code IDIOTS. Idiots to try it for free. Blue Chew is better, cheaper, faster choice. And we thank you for sponsoring the brilliant idiots. Um, you know, this um, episode is also brought to you by Mercari, Charlemagne. Mercari. Mercari. Now, guys, if you have a bunch of stuff lying around the house, and I know all of you right now have been looking through your house and looking at all the bullshit that you have. I got a bunch of bullshit. Exactly. Now it's time. Organize it. Get rid of it. You got a kid's baseball glove that no longer fits, a pair of jeans that you don't only wear once, an old hiding, uh, you know, old phone hiding in a drawer or something like that. There's an app you can sell all this stuff. It's called Mercari. Mercari, this is the selling app that makes it fast and easy to get almost anything sold. All right? Couldn't be simpler. Take a few pictures of your stuff. Add the description. Boom. Your item's listed. Then it's sold. Mercari emails you a shipping label, and you just stick it on and send it off. No meetups, no uncomfortable um, hangouts in Starbucks with the person that you're selling some video games to. With millions and millions of uh, people using the Mercari app in all 50 states, stuff really sells. The app is over 500,000. Um, uh, 500,000 reviews of the App Store with an average of 4.8 star rating. So why not give it a try? Don't let that stuff uh, go to waste. Sell it, ship it, get paid with Mercari. You can find it the the App Store anywhere, Mercari.com. That's M-E-R-C-A-R-I, Mercari, the selling app. Now, Charlemagne the God, it is very important I ask you about something because um, there is there is a little there is a little drama, a little accusation. Uh, thrown out there okay mm -hmm. that um by another podcaster that you might be leaving the breakfast club who said that another podcaster said it <laughs> um i believe it was it was joseph budden oh okay i believe joseph budden said that you will be leaving the breakfast club is that is that correct what is the deal with that no, in I mean, all that, seriousness, is there any I'm, truth to that? I think that's just Joe's Joe's opinion. I mean, I mean, I, I can't be mad at Joe's opinion though because he's he's basing it off uh, a conversation we had when he was on Breakfast Club with State of the Culture interview. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So I mean, those, those, those. What happened in that combo? Just to bring us up to speed. Um, Joe just asked, uh, "Are we are we redoing our contracts or some something something to that something to that extent?" Right. You know what I mean? And um, we all just got silent basically and you know i just said my my contract is up in december whatever take with that is take, true. Yeah, which is true you know but take take that however you want to take it um i think joe just yeah joe just joe just going off the speculation that he's heard out there you know what i mean because a lot of people ran with what i said in that state of the culture interview and they they did articles on it and stuff like that you know what i mean it became a little yeah. story it was in page six and things of that nature but I'm not tripping off that. I, I actually was listening to the Joe Budden podcast on that day. I was, I was more, you know what I'd be more concerned about, man? What's that? I don't like the, I don't know if I like, I don't like the misinformation about platforms, right? Whether it's the Brilliant Idiots or Breakfast Club, you know what I'm saying? Because both of those are my babies, right? right? And, and. You know, that's 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 what I brilliant it is. It's something I've been doing for the past seven years. Breakfast Club is something I've been doing for the past nine, right? So I see like I saw Joe say that and then I'm just looking at YouTube comments and I see people say things like, Oh, well, you know, um, 
the, br- the, br- the brilliant idiots isn't, isn't that successful. And I'm like, that's so disrespectful because it just shows me how misinformed people are. Mm. And, and, and it's, 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 I, I, told you, I told you a long time ago, the reason I love the brilliant idiots is because we created such a cult-like following. Yes. The brilliant idiots. And we have like this, this, this niche group of yes. people who listen to Brilliant Idiots. And when we do live shows, which we haven't done one in a while, but when we used to do live shows, live shows be sold out. Like we've yeah. taken, we've done Brilliant Idiots in London, sold out shows. You know what I'm saying? We get requests to go overseas to do Brilliant Idiots all the time. But just more importantly, I think Brilliant Idiots is on what, 300? Chris and Taylor jump in real quick. 300 how many episodes oh, in man, seven years? Lot. Yeah, yeah. Five years, I think, I think we've It's like 305, 305 right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, at 300, <clears throat> we did the we did the the math. Brilliant Idiots has over 80 plus million listens. 80 plus million fucking l- listens. Mm. If that's not successful, I don't know what the fuck is. So I I think it's because we, well, at least I choose. You know, what I'm saying Andrew Andrew approaches it a little different, but I choose to keep something brilliant. It is something close to my heart and like. Mm-hmm not be all out there on front street with it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Cause as soon as we let some of you little motherfucking outsiders in y'all ruin shit. Okay. And took us out of context and the way we like to do things over here. And we had to fucking tiptoe and walk on ice for months. Okay. Andrew didn't Andrew doubled the fuck down, tripled the fuck down. And I'm glad he goddamn did. Okay. But fuck, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You ruined it. We let y'all in the motherfucking house and y'all infected everybody. That's exactly why during this quarantine, I'm not letting nobody to fuck in until this shit is over, bro. Okay, we let y'all motherfuckers in and y'all fuck shit up. So I think being that we don't put it out there like that and because me and Andrew rely on each other so much because we believe in each other that much instead of bringing in guests all the time, it's just like people kind of, we take those kind of numbers for granted, bro. Yeah, I mean, that's that's another thing. It's like, and I've experienced it, I'm sure you've experienced it with, with Breakfast Club, where it's like, if you have a big guest or an interesting guest or an interesting interview, those numbers are going to spike, right? Yeah. But there is also something to having the same two people talk every single week, no guests, and having this insanely successful show. I mean, like, I mean, there's many ways to define success, you know? I mean, there's strictly monetarily defining it. I mean, is that, did Joe say that, it wasn't successful. Oh no, no, no! I was just reading oh. comments and the thing because you know people compare things like what you shouldn't do. Like they compare the Breakfast Club platform. Let's be clear about the Breakfast Club platform. Breakfast Club platform is a once in a lifetime generational platform. Yes, you know what I'm saying them shit don't come around all of the time. You know what I mean. Right. So what we built with the Breakfast Club is unique. So you can't compare a podcast to that. You know what I'm no, saying? Like you, you can't compare They're different you things. can't com- you can't compare what we do here on Brilliant Idiots to what I do over there. For what we do over here, yeah. Over 80 plus that was at episode 300 at over we had over 80 plus million listens. So yeah. we're way above that now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I like what we built with the Brilliant Idiots. This is a great platform and it's consistent. 7 yeah. years going, baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With, with 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 a lot of ads and everything else. That's why I guess I guess when we do you know, finally take this thing to another level, another situation, people will respect it more. But I think, I think to a lot of people, this is brand new. Cause I even see people saying to me, Charlamagne, you need to start your own podcast. Like I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I don't want to do the Charlamagne the God podcast. I right. wanted to do brilliant idiots. I wanted right. to create a whole nother brand with my guy. Yeah, You know what I mean? And that's what we did. And we have this whole unique, you know, crew of listeners, a bunch of brilliant idiots that roll with us. And I appreciate it. Now, when it comes to the breakfast club, there's just this wide hip having hater on Joe Budden podcast who just puts out a lot of misinformation. Like what? I mean, it's just like when you say things like the Breakfast Club doesn't have the relevancy that it had two or three years ago. Relevancy is subjective, right? Because I I'm not trying to be the 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 hip hop. I'm, I am hip hop, but I'm not trying to be the guy that has the hot hip hop story every couple of days. You know mm. what I'm saying? Brothers like DJ Academics, they have that space. You know what I'm saying? And that's just yeah. the way that's the way the game goes. And that's good. You know what I mean? Breakfast Club caters to so many different things, whether it's hip hop, whether it's politics, politics whether it's yeah. religion and spiritual leaders, whether it's mindfulness and mental health, whether it's entrepreneurship. So if you look at the Breakfast Club numbers, not only have 
it, they gone up. We're in a hundred plus markets throughout the country. See, this yeah. is the problem with consistency. You People take get used to it for granted. Yeah, it gets comfortable when you take a mother. Are, you take yeah. a motherfucker averaging thirty points for seventeen years, like LeBron James, for granted because you're just used to it. Yeah, like like it like nothing really impresses you from them anymore because you've seen them at your best. But when you're talking about what we, yo, we're in Toronto, Canada now, bro. Bro, the Breakfast Club is syndicated in Toronto, fucking Canada. We're in a hundred plus markets. Global. Global. global it's like you can't go anywhere where there are hip-hop fans and they don't know what it is it's that is not outlet. even just hip-hop yeah. Charlamagne's on cnn and msnbc all the time because of the interviews that we do on the breakfast club with right. presidential candidates you right. know what i'm saying you got these you got those platforms like that saying the breakfast club is a must stop yeah for presidential candidates like yeah. like come on bro like yo like don't like appreciate things in our culture that have grown and that have evolved okay yeah, and, and and just because they're not on your particular radar all of the time, maybe you need to get your head out of the fucking ground like an ostrich mm. and look around and see how everything has grown and everything's evolved. I do that shit all the time. Like I can yeah. look and I can see what place DJ Academics has in the, in the atmosphere. I can look and see what place Joe Budden Podcast has in the ecosystem. I can look and see what place Rap Radar has in the ecosystem. Drink Champs, Joe Rogan Podcast, Jesus yeah. Zimero, you know, uh, Stuff You Should Know. Any, any of these podcasts, like, yo, there's podcasts out there that is doing motherfucking fucking five million listens a month that yeah. I know y'all niggers don't listen to. <laughs> okay? And, that ain't, and that, ain't, that ain't a shot. It just is what it is. Right. You know, you're supposed no, to you're like right. a cough show. You're supposed to. Uh, yeah, I, I tried. I took my head away from the camera. I, I feel like um, I feel like it's, a lot of times it's hard for us to get out of our bubble. Yes. So it's like when people that were in our bubble grow past our bubble and not past meaning they no longer operate within it, but they also operate with other, in, within other things. And if Absolutely. you don't see that, Yes. You don't see the effect. So if you have this like very uh, myopic view of life, which is, hey, I am looking at the hip hop world and how things are affected in the hip hop world. You're not going to notice the greater effect of a show like The Breakfast Club. Right? Joe does. I give Joe props. You know what I'm saying? Joe, 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 Joe really gave it up last week. And he was saying, like, I'm not even going to he said, I'm not going to understate the value of the Breakfast Club and, 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 and Charlemagne and what the game, how the game would look totally different if he wasn't on, wasn't on Breakfast Club no more. And, yo, by the way, man, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? And the reason I appreciate that, because any of those brothers will tell you, I'm the guy that gives it up. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I salute Joe Budden for what he's built with his podcast. I salute academics. I, I salute a Joe Rogan. I salute Andrew. Like, I love this. I love to see people prospering. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because – yeah. It's so much out here for every fucking body. You yeah. know what I mean? Like when I see D Nice you know, on Instagram and he does his DJ live set, and then I see a bunch of DJs following suit, I'm not mad at that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He created an energy. He created an energy that's creating other waves, you know? And I yeah. feel like we've always done that. I feel like we've done that, whether it's with the Breakfast Club, whether it's the podcast, whether it's you with your stand up and, you know, the way you started putting it online and now other comedians are following suit. Like yeah. that's the way shit. Is supposed to be yeah, so. I just got to embrace the role as an influencer. Like you got to embrace the role as the innovator. Like yes, you can't, I think like the person who creates with confidence is cool when everybody copies them because it's like okay, I'm just gonna make some more new shit, right? And the person that creates with insecurity gets upset when other people are doing the same thing because they don't have the confidence they could create more new shit. I don't yeah. care when anybody takes the things we do. I love it. I tell them to do it because you're just gonna push me to do even more. You could just push me to have a new idea, man. So, but yeah, I like, I like the idea of like getting credit when credit's due, but I also understand the role that you got to have when you're a leader, which is you're leading because you're built to lead. You're not leading for the credit. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You built and that's what you said. You hit it right on the head. I'm, I'm, I'm building, we're doing this cause we built the lead. You know what I mean? That's and I it. just, I just don't like, um, like, yo, this don't don't sit around and wait on, wait on people's downfall. You know what yeah. I mean? Because 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 you know you, you, you a few years ago you like oh they they it's over for them like it's yeah. it's a wrap they they almost done they burnt out and then we turn up 
we turn up in a way that people have never seen a show turn up in, in, in a couple years with, with everything from presidential candidates to soldier boy to everything. And now it's just like you got to kind of eat crow. And your only thing is, well, Charlemagne's leaving. So when Charlemagne's leaving, it's over. Nah, nigga. Mm. You don't know. You don't, by the way, we don't know what the future holds. Is what I'm yeah. saying. I'm just saying, like, don't, don't do that. To don't do that to. But to, it also looks bad on you because you got to stop. You got to stop talking about someone like, if there's someone you don't like, you got to stop talking about them like they're royalty, right? Because you have the ability to make news. You have the ability to make waves. You have the ability on your platform to do whatever you want. But if you're sitting around going, well, we'll, we'll, we'll take it once the king uh, leaves the throne. It's like, yeah. what you paying for? Instead of, instead of instead of building your own pie and building your own throne, go to just, work. Yeah, just don't, just don't. I don't, don't, don't be a wide hip having hater. Is what I'm mm. saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't mm. just put misinformation out there just because that's what you're hoping happens. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't do that to people. You know what I mean? When I see people and I think that they are doing good, I salute them. I you think you've I mean? been very complimentary of more, to be honest I, with you. I've, I've, I've very. I've, I, when, when he first got on there, I said, "Yo, he was the missing link." So. I don't know where the hate comes from, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is, but you know, I just hope that after this whole quarantine is over, you can still fit in your jeans, okay? Because <laughs> them shit be, them weight, shit, man. you be putting tension on them motherfuckers now, bro. Them shit be stressed <laughs> the fuck out, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, okay? All right, my guy. But uh, nah, salute to the, salute to the Joe Button podcast. Salute to academics so to everybody man Yo, Rory had a great point i saw on twitter he made a great point he said that the he goes the uh, joe rogan experience podcast is the drake verse for comedians and i thought that was really well put like drake doing a verse on one of your songs nah. really put you on put you on nah, and doing as a comedian doing joe rogan really can put you on man i get what he's saying but joe rogan podcast got way more impact on comedians than it does <laughs> than, it, than drake, than, does on than a than drake verse has on rappers like it's it it's been some songs drake has been on that hasn't hit bro i can't think of too many comedians shit i can't think of any that's been on joe rogan that haven't seen some type of elevation some type of boost oh no it's a guaranteed it's a guaranteed boost especially when you're built for it like I think a lot of people don't realize now, like, you have to be ready for a Rogan. You have to be ready for a Breakfast Club. Like, when you go on Rogan or Breakfast Club or one of these big podcasts, right, that has a lot of influence or Brilliant Idiots or whatever it is, like, if you have no digital footprint before, all those people are going to go look for you afterwards because they like you. And then if you have nothing on the internet, they're going to be like, oh, he was fun. And then they're going to forget about you. But if you got tons of content already up, you got a weekly podcast, you got shit that's constantly in their face, they're going to go, oh, I love that guy. I'm going to follow him and I'm going to keep up with him and I'm going to go check out his shows. I'm sure the same thing is with hip hop, all that. You probably have guests that have a great interview, but they just don't put out enough stuff where people can continue to pay attention to them. That's why I always tell you, don't come on Breakfast Club unless you got something to sell, unless you're trying to raise money for something. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Unless you're trying to point people in the direction of something that you're you're trying to build like you know what i mean like that and let, if it's not already set up and organized don't come on the breakfast club mm. with it i still get people coming up to me because of joe rogan podcast see? you know what i mean and then and, and i see people quoting shit that joe rogan said to me like literally literally when all of those stories were out like oh shaw means leaving breakfast club it was people in the comments of the new york post youtube oh, yeah. everywhere and they were saying shit like yo like joe rogan said Charlemagne is the last Last radio star radio or whatever yeah, 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 yeah. was like like listen man some shows just have that impact and have that influence you don't take joe rogan for granted because he's been on for 10 years no because no. honestly the longer you're on it's like a fine wine it's like a cognac the longer you're on consistently performing at a high level the greater value your show has like you think you think canada is putting us on in the morning because we was hot for a year Mm -hmm. No, Canada's putting us on because we've been consistent for nine years, mm -hmm. and this is something that you can make an investment in. This is good stock, baby. Yo, hot is way easier than consistent. Oh, yes, man. Yes. Hot, that's why that's I don't, what like, people don't realize, man. Exactly. Hot is way easier than consistent, right? Hot, yo, the irony is hot is cool. Yeah. The irony, yeah. The irony is yeah. hot is actually cool, and guess what? That hotness can cool off real quick, bruh, bruh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can be hot for a year. You can be hot for two years. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
But when you consistently come come back and talk to me when you're consistent for nine, ten years. Simple as that. When when for nine, ten years you've put up thirty. Now you a consummate all star, baby. Also, let's talk about something like cool in general. Being cool is so whack. Like, have you ever been watching something that you're really excited about, right? Mm -hmm. Like a TV show or even a concert. Let's say there's a concert where you're just like, fuck it, I'm going to let loose. I I remember once I was at an Ed Sheeran concert and there were some people in front of me and they were trying to act like they were too cool for the concert. Like they weren't letting themselves get into the songs. They were like some hipster fucking kids that they were like kind of making fun of the concert a bit. And it ruined my experience because I was like, yo, why are you trying to be cool here? Why can't yeah. we all just, why can't we all have the confidence to just let ourselves go and enjoy this fucking great performer and just look stupid and all the yeah. stupid? And in that moment, I'm like, yo, the, the cool guy, the guy who's like never that impressed, kind of like over shit, nothing really phases him, is the wackest dude. Corny. Like you never want him around. It might be cool in a movie if you're like, or a TV show if you're fucking Fonzie or something like that. But like, as a friend? You want to get excited about things in life and passionate about things in life. And if you got your friend who's just like, man, it's all right. It's like, why are you even here? Why are you even here? Why are you, even why here? you ruining everything? Why are you here and why are you in front of the camera? Because my thing is like, if you're going to be a comedian, a media personality, a musician, if you think you're too cool for school and you can't open up and show some vulnerability or, or even be afraid to fucking fail. You know what I'm saying? That's you got to be willing to get... You, it's you fear. Be, fear. You it's got, you got looking stupid. Yes. You got to be willing to be, to get criticized. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You don't get, you don't get nine, 10 years of consistency without making some motherfucking mistakes. It's going to be some times where you say some shit that people don't agree with, that you do some shit that people don't agree with and motherfuckers going to roast your ass for that shit. But mm-hmm. guess what? You just got to continue to do you. Look at LeBron, man. Though, you know how much shit LeBron James gets? Mm-hmm. You know how much shit Jay-Z has gotten over the years? Oh, but guess God. what they did? Stayed fucking consistent. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the only way to stay consistent is to know exactly why you're doing it. I'm not doing this because I'm trying to get monetary gain out of it. I'm not doing this because I want people to love me. I'm doing this because Leonard McKelvey, Charlemagne the God, loves doing this. That's something, that's something I think a lot of people don't realize. Like You and I are, are smart people that understand uh, entertainment, and we know how to make things massive if we want. Yes. If you wanted Brilliant Idiots to be a 10 million listen podcast, whatever, there are things that we could do and change in order to make that happen. What I want, and I assume what you want, is to do the show that we love and then get the most out of the thing we love, not yes. do the show that might get the most views that we hate. So for me, as long as I love doing this, the, if, as long as I love doing this, the people that listen, that is enough for me because I love doing this and it's insanely successful and profitable and all these things, but it's the show I love to do. That's a Corona cheat code. Sacrifice joy. What you just said is a Corona cheat code. It's a Corona cheat code because we talking about doing something for the love, right? I'm in the basement right now doing the show. You in the studio risking your life in the middle <laughs> of New York city right now to do the motherfucking show. Right? Yeah. Everybody right now, everything that all this shit is stripped away from us, right? The jobs, you can't go into work. You can't go to school mm. with that. The only things you're really going to care about at this time is the things you actually love. Mm. So it's your family, right? You lean mm. into your family. You lean, if you're D nice, you lean into DJing. If you're a communicator on a podcast or radio show, you lean into that. Like I would be going crazy if I didn't have this kitten here and I couldn't yeah. do the breakfast club in the morning or if I couldn't do motherfucking the podcast. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. just like the thing you actually love, the thing you would do for free is what you're leaning into right now. Right you know now. why? Because yeah. technically you are doing it for free. Ain't no money. I know for a fact <laughs> D-Nice probably lost like over 100 grand, 150 grand this year because he can't go out there and play 100%. gigs. But 100%. he's in his house for nine fucking hours because he loves what he does. He's not doing that because he wants you to love him. Yeah. He's not doing that because he's trying to get some money. That's how he was taking his mind off of, off of, off of this situation. And everybody bought into it. Yeah. And that's what we all have to do. You got to lean into what you fucking love lean during this love. motherfucking coronavirus. Lean into your love. That's, f- that's fucking great. That's Simple great. as that. Yeah. Shit, let's do some asking idiots and get the fuck out of here, man. Let's do it, man. We got some, Taylor? Yeah, I got some right got here. Em? Okay. Taylor, you want to read them? 
Oh, you don't want to you don't want to show your face because you don't got your head done. <laughs> Excuse me. You guys can read them as usual. Yep. Taylor so. won't put that fucking camera on. <laughs> Why do you try me all the time? Come on, put that. <laughs> hey! Oh my God! Look at that fucking hair. Got Holy him. shit! My <laughs> God, shit is rough in Philly. <laughs> I'm not even in She's Philly. She's in Philly. Brooklyn. I'm in New York. Okay. She asked me uh, to come to the studio. I said, "Hell no." <laughs> All right, ask an idiot. Evan Quasdani and says, "What is the most contradictory thing you've seen from someone who is being super cautious of their health in these times?" I mean, probably me coming to the studio every single day. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I am in the crib. It's studio to the crib, and everybody who works at the studio has to do the same thing. It's studio to the crib, crib to the studio. But um. I think that could be a little bit contradictory. I probably could have been a little better about that. Um, and, and I saw yesterday in this time where elderly people are really supposed to be taking care of themselves. Joe Biden was on Jake Tapper's show and he was broadcasting from his house. And, you know, Jake Tapper started talking to him about his age because Joe Biden is like 67. No, he's 78 years old. He's old, right? He's, he's going to live. He's, he was, Joe Biden is going to remember BC twice, before Christ and before Corona. But Joe <laughs> Biden fucking... <laughs> they asked him about um, the coronavirus and, you know, how was he feeling? And he's like, oh, I'm good. I haven't, had, I, I haven't had any symptoms and I'm taking care of myself. And then he coughs into his fucking head no. literally seconds later. And Jake Tapper is like, that's not how you cough, Joe. Uh, You're supposed to cough into your fucking arm. And he's just like, I, I, you know what? You're right. You're right. I just thought that was contradictory and... I couldn't even say very disgusting because he's at that age where he really don't give a fuck. Yeah. I mean, this is really every presidential candidate is 80 years old and we have a virus that really only kills them. <laughs> I don't know, bro. This shit might it's all be about the running mate, baby. Say what? It's all about the running mate. They better get them a goddamn 40 something, 50 something year old running mate with a great immune system. That's a fact. Yes. All right, apex.vmg says, would you rather get yelled at by your girl in front of your friends, parents, or kids? Ask an idiot. What you say, Schultz? Yelled at by my girl in front of my friends, parents, or kids? Yeah, which one would you um, rather? I'd rather get yelled at in front of my parents because at least my dad would be like, yeah, you know, it'd be like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I don't like, mind getting yelled. Well, you know what? I wouldn't want to get yelled at in front of my kids by my girl. Not my kids, not my not my friends, but my parents, they'll get it. Yeah, I think the kids and the friends are disrespectful. I think if you're yelling at me in front of your friends, it got I gotta know the reason you're yelling at me though. Like for example? I mean if I if you know black men don't cheat, but if I got caught cheating and in that moment, you know, the girl that I was cheating with was there or you happened to look at my phone, something. But like it would have to be the explanation there? for you yelling at me in that moment. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But just yelling at me because you know. You bossing me around like you do at the house. Don't do that shit in public. Yeah, now that's a little, a little bit crazy. Can't do that. Um, at Tariq, uh, Tariq Shot Ghost asking Nidia, Tariq Shot Ghost said, if you got the Roni from your side chick, should you quarantine with her instead of risking the health of your family? If you got the Rona from your side chick, should you quarantine with her except risking the health of your family? Mm -hmm. Um. Ooh, nah, man. You got to be with your family. I think if you got it, everyone got it. I think that's how the Rona goes, man. If you got it, your loved ones get it. If they get it, you get it. That's just how it. That's just how it is. Ride if you get die, man. If, if you get the Rona from your side chick, you should go quarantine by your motherfucking self. Mm. <laughs> that's a good answer too. That's what you should do. That's what you do. Quarantine by your motherfucking self. And by the way, you would never have to admit to your man, girl, that you got the Rona from your side chick. Because how could you even prove that you got the Rona from your side chick? Yeah, exactly. Yo, that camera went right on Taylor's edges just now. Crazy. I'm not even in this conversation. Keep going. <laughs> hey, at, at Hell Gif is hilarious. At Hell Gif commented. I know this is sarcasm, but this, this is why I love the brilliant idiots listeners because this is a call back to something we talked about. Ask an idiot, what is your reaction knowing that Steve Ballmer bought the forum for $400 million in cash, knowing that he could have gave each American $1 million and still be fine? <laughs> Yo, I love American math, bro. Uh, hilarious. Um, I like that he bought the forum, though, and finally give the Clippers a home. I think it's pathetic to share a stadium with the other team when you know that stadium is their stadium. Like, 
you can't develop fans like that. You can't develop like culture like that. I mean, it's just crazy. You just you're the side chick. That's what the Clippers are. So the fact that they're gonna have a home, boom, I'm into it. You're gonna see some competition in LA. Yeah, I see the Clippers winning at least two championships. Ooh. Two to three over okay. the next over okay. the next four or five years. So I think it's worth it. You know what I'm saying? It's worth it to be able to hang some of your own banners up in your own fucking stadium. Facts. If they win you know? one in the Lakers stadium, could they even hang it? That's a good fucking question. That's a dilemma that LA has never been prepared to fucking um to handle. Face. I think yeah. the Clippers got retired jerseys. Don't ain't Elgin Baylor retired? I don't know. I don't know, but come on, bro. You need your own stadium. You All right, social arena. gang asking idiot wants to know what would Schultz do to prevent more Rona cases in New York? Um shit. It's a good ass question, man. Oh, bad weather. We said this earlier. But that's the Ooh. key. If you could find a way to manipulate the weather, just keep it rainy, keep it cold outside. Nobody's going to go out the house. New Yorkers don't like that shit. We'll <laughs> stay in if it's snowing. We'll stay in if anything. Anything that could fuck up our sneakers, we're not going to leave the house. So put it, fuck your sneakers up weather. As long as it's fuck your sneakers up weather, Corona will die immediately in New York City. All right. I think we talked about this, but uh, Mart E. McFly 24 says, what is your take on Trumpito? trying to reopen the economy way too soon before experts' recommendations. Um, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I, I want that to happen. You know what I mean? I, don't, I, I, want the, I, want the country, I want the country back open. Right. You know what I mean? But I want the country back open when it's time for the country to be back open. You know right. what I mean? And, and, and until you flat, you can't worry about flattening, flattening the economy until you flatten the fucking curve. So that's the thing. It's like people's health and the health of an economy are intertwined. If you don't have healthy people, you can't have a healthy economy. Mm. So if you open up the economy again, then everybody gets sick. That's just going to have even more devastating effects on the economy. Mm. So I think you have to take care of the people first. I mean, look, I'm no, some, no fucking economist or health uh, you know, official, but I think you got to take care of people first and then you can crack that bitch open and then put a big stimulus package in there. Put some money in my pocket. I'll spend it. Fuck. I, I, I do understand, though, um why they haven't implemented martial law. And, and, and the only reason I'm calling it martial law because I, I don't know any other name for it. I, I would just say a government-mandated, you know, lockdown where everybody has to stay at home. If right. Donald Trump wasn't the president, if there was any other president in there that people actually trusted um, and, and didn't look at as a racist or a bigot or look at as they, somebody that has the potential to be a dictator or a king, whatever it is, they wouldn't mind. If Barack Obama was in the White House and he said, look, we need to have a government mandated lockdown to flatten this curve. This is what they did in China. We know we're not China, but Americans are going to have to sacrifice a little bit of freedom, a little bit of civil liberties just for a couple of weeks until we figure this shit the fuck out. We'll figure out, you know, the packages to make everybody get a few thousand dollars or whatever it is for the next couple of weeks so y'all be able to pay your bills. Or, you know, shit is suspended, rent and all of that so y'all y'all can pay y'all bills. If he, if it was Barack, people would, 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 would accept it more. Being that it's Trump, Mm. motherfuckers don't want to hear it not happening but if you look at you know the way the cases are throughout the country yo it's places that aren't getting hit nearly as bad as new york city right. nearly as bad as new jersey nearly right. as bad as california so why should everybody be on a government mandated lockdown throughout the country you know what i'm saying you might need to build a wall around new york you know what i mean build a small little wall around california Right. And, the, and, and, and just contain things in the rest of the country. Like, it's no need for everybody to be on lockdown. Like, certain parts of the country should be kind of getting back to normal. Right. I would think so. I mean, yeah, that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is if they go back to normal, it actually will start to spread again. That's, I think, the fear. Especially in New York. New York's too much of a hub, bro. But I'll, I think also the thing with New York is New York is testing more than everybody. And if you get tested... If you don't get tested, you can't get anything. I mean, you can get it. You just won't know. No, so I, yo, I, know, I, know, I know guys who treated AIDS tests like that for years. 100%. I used you to go treat get that STD, HIV that test. <laughs> That's right. You get that HIV test as long as you don't go back. You good. Who knows? <laughs> who knows we're clean, anything? Baby, we clean out here. Who knows anything? Y'all talking about Corona not showing no symptoms. Yeah. You show me the symptom magic is shown. <laughs> hey, there's plenty of people that's living with HIV who haven't shown no goddamn symptoms. They just out here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I killed the messenger. This is the last one. Last question. Uh, I killed the messenger. Said, "Will the Rona forever change the approach of eating ass?" No. 
I think if anything, we'll eat more ass because we know how much people value toilet paper. <laughs> Great fucking point. Americans got clean asses, bro. Let's America got clean asses. If it's one thing America cares about, it's clean asses, bro. I bet you bidet. I bet you the uh, the, the the sale of bidets has, has grown tremendously since this Corona shit. We know they can't keep toilet paper on the shelf. Motherfuckers clearly ain't blowing their noses. Yeah, I think man. That eating ass is in the second that we get back to. Uh, you know, no longer social distancing, socializing. Second, we get back to socializing, eating ass is going down 100%. You probably appreciate eating ass more because yeah, you, you, you know what the person put themselves through so you could get that ass eaten. Yeah, because when it comes to distance, right, like distance, we, this six feet of distance thing, when, when everything's all said and done, it's going to make us want to be as close to people as possible. You know like what I'm having saying? Having a tongue in someone's ass. There you go. Yeah. There you fucking go. I agree with you 120 million percent. God bless. Taylor, uh, we see that thing of Valtrex on your um, dresser too. I just want to throw that out there. I don't. You didn't. You're not trying. Yes, yes, we do. Well, you didn't fucking move. What are you <laughs> talking about? Are you looking at my <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It's annoying. But you forgot to mention too that um, there's gonna be a lot of babies too after all this is done. I don't know because I ain't fucking. You fucking shows. Are you fucking? I'm fucking. I almost left it in today, so she might be right. Whoa. Hey, right. come on, bro. Okay, I did see a funny tweet yesterday. This girl was like, um, hold on. Hold on, I'm going to read this shit to you. This shit was funny. We can, get, we can end on this shit. This girl said, bring the NBA back. I'm over here getting fucked six times a day. The other girl left a comment and said, bitch, that's all. I got to suck dick every two hours. Bro. And, then, and then another girl sent the girl that said she got to suck dick every two hours. She put prayers. <laughs> <laughs> it's true man when you when you have like something like this happen you realize the athletes don't get paid enough yeah man they no for real yo bro. for the amount of distraction they give us they yes man more. what about yes. teachers say what man they need to raise the bar for teachers too i mean i'm gonna agree with you because it's the right thing to do i always thought teachers should get paid more money than I mean, my mom's a teacher, though, so I know how much she made. My mom, the most my mom ever made was $30,000 a year. Oh, that's criminal. That's what I'm saying. And she's that's in South criminal. Carolina. Like, like, teachers definitely, are, yes, teachers, doctors, anybody that's a public servant like that, that's why our taxpaying dollars should go to. Okay? 100%. And don't ever let America tell you they can't afford shit ever fucking again. <laughs> All right? Don't ever, like, don't want to hear that shit. You know, I'm paid in full when Mitch was like, I'm broke, baby. And, and, and Uncle Ice was like, shit. I can smell a motherfucker with money. Mm. Okay? That's how we got to start calling out America when they say they can't afford shit. When they say we can't have free health care, when they say they can't afford free college, when they say they can't erase student, you know, debt, student loan debt, fuck that. These motherfuckers found $2 trillion from some goddamn way. Yo, so here's the thing with that. I mean, obviously, it's a, more, a little more complex, but, like, here's the thing with that. When they were thinking about bailing out the airline industry, and the airline industry isn't like American Airlines or Delta, it's actually people who make the airlines, like Boeing and shit, right? Boeing rejected the bailout. Why? Because the, because the country was like, we want equity in your company, I believe. We want equity in your company until we get our money back. In other words, we get a piece of Boeing for five years until we get paid back or whatever, right? Fair. Sounds fair to me. Sounds fair. But Boeing, this is what people don't realize. When you're such a big company, you have leverage. Boeing is so big that if they fail, it really fucks up the economy, the global economy. So in that situation, they're like, nah, I want more. I want more in this negotiation. So when it comes to like money, if you really want to find a way to fuck the government into giving you money, make it so that when you guys, for example, you want reparations, right? Yep. How, did, how did the bus boycott work? This is a perfect but, example. How yeah, the bus boycott work? They, they fucking boycotted it. Until? Until they fucking got what they wanted. Because it affected the money. The money, yeah. Right? So that's the way you do it. Like, if black people, if you want reparations, stop spending. If black not people only, really want reparations, what they got to do is literally go, okay, we're not spending a single fucking penny. We're going to grind this economy to a halt until you cough up some bread because we know the thing you're more scared about you being the government the government is more afraid than anything is the economy grinding to a halt so the real power is the ability to stop the economy so if you guys stop spending completely then the government comes in and negotiates just like the bus boycott that's why they're not going to come bail out some student loans they're not going to do none of that shit 
unless we reduce spending and affect the economy in that way. That's the best manipulation. I agree. Stop spending and um, stop just fucking randomly voting for goddamn Democrats. If you're black, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we should be voting in blocks and we should be voting for people that are looking out for our best motherfucking interest. Mm, Okay. But all I know is America can get that money whenever the fuck they want to, bro. Mm -hmm. These motherfuckers is like your mama. Like, you know, you got that mama in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Who 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 you always thought was poor mm-hmm. until she reached into that goddamn bra mm-hmm. and pull out some stacks of motherfucking cash. That's God. That's what the government did with that two trillion dollars. Two. You know, I don't even know how many zeros is in two trillion, bro. Two trillion fucking dollars. The fuck. It's a lot, baby. That's a lot of fucking money, it's man. A lot. Listen, um, I'll end on this. Uh, salute to Tesla and Figaro. Tesla and Figaro had a PSA. She said, uh, "Beware, ladies." The stimulus bill has passed. You will get twelve hundred per adult plus five hundred per child. The same bum that wanted to spend your income tax, your income tax last month, but didn't pay any bills in your house, is now back on the hunt. And you think it's true? I, I, I know it's true. Really? It's a lot of attractive fat girls today <laughs> that, <laughs> that got three and four kids. A lot, a lot of, a lot of fat girls with three and four kids is getting that hey big head text. You know what I'm saying? What you doing? Who you quarantining and with? They're built for the quarantine. They could cook, <laughs> right? They could clean. It's still the house got chilly. snacks. Still kind of chilly here in New York. You know what I'm saying? Hey. That warm body. Hey. <laughs> Get you a fat girl and yes. quarantine. With three kids because she's about to get $500 per child. Ooh, I like this. Go get rich. Right. That's right. Listen, as always... Uh, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.